Listen to them, watch them, follow them. The Cougars, your home of the Campbell Cougars. This is WLAF. Cougar fans, we're on standby for the Campbell game. Stay tuned here to WLAF.
It's almost game time, and you've connected to the right spot for Campbell Sports. WLAF. are on the air and this is your front row seat to all the action this is jason kids head basketball coach of the lady cougars campbell high sports is a presentation of these outstanding wlaf corporate partners hi this is rissa at terry's pharmacy we'll follow utilities lub hi this is Rhonda longmire with community trust bank building communities built on trust hi this is tabitha burris this is Lori johnson this is Paige at ee hill insurance this is lansdon hill with hill insurance this is number 30 former lady cougar dr jill browning Having trouble seeing the scoreboard? Then it's time to see me, Dr. Jill Browning. Valley Roofing, East Tennessee's leader in roofing and seamless guttering. Hi, this is President Debbie Petrie at TCAT Jacksboro. Tim Smith at TCAT Jacksboro. Go, Go Cougars. Cougars. Citizens Bank, bank your own way. This is Matt Klein with CNL Metal, former Cougar number 42. Hey, this is Brenda Russell with Clayton Holmes Jacksboro. Hey, Camel County Cougar sports fans, this is former Cougar number 32, Randy Heatherly. Rice Oil, your home for BP. Clarinet, flag corps of the Campbell County Marching Band. Hi, this is Amanda Brown with Cumberland Gap Medical. This is Bailey Ball. I'm back for fall at my supply. Hi, this is Rayma Darty at United Cumberland Bank, and we love the Cougars. Hi, this is Joey Porton at the world-famous Charlie's Pizza. This is Tracy Lobertini at Alco Builders and Realty in La Follette. Hello, it's Larry Burge at Burge Screen Print, and go Cougars. And Lace to Pearls is just for girls, of course, Jim. This is Brian. Carrie. Beth. Come, Come see us, us at First National, National Bank. Bank. Hey, this is Melinda at Powell Clinch Utilities. Go Cougars! This is Brian Leach with Grace Rehab. Hey, this is Hunter Huckabee. Come see my dad at Dole's Tire Shop. This is Mark Kane with La Follette Medical Center. This is David Reynolds, President of People's Bank of the South. Hey, this is Cougar basketball coach Ernie McClawson. Listen to him. Watch him. Follow him. The Cougars. Your home of the Campbell Cougars. This is WLAF. Brown Court the venue, the opponents tonight. Campbell and Central, the Bobcats visiting for district games. Jim Freeman, Don Atherton here. Don, district time tonight, starting that uh, run for the end of the season. This is These are critical games tonight for both teams. Both teams come in 0-2 in district play. <laughs> yes, and I, I think, Jim, is the same token that we have a district game uh, Friday as well and next week, so it's important to take each, each game one at a time now don't don't look ahead. Just take one game at a time and uh, and go from there. But this, like you said, Jim, this district is, is is games are very important. Well, and especially in the girls bracket, it almost seems like it's just, it's wide open. Yes, is uh, is it, has Oak Ridge got one loss already? I think. Let we'll the check on that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, it's it's a. Uh, you know, Central is always going to be very competitive, for sure. they got good athletes, and uh, I'm sure, you know, that, that their coaches wants this game just as bad as we do. Campbell County hosting Central. The girls coming up in just a moment, followed in the nightcap by the Cougars and the Central Bobcats here on the WLAF Doyle's Tire Shop Sports Network. Hi, I am Bailey Ball from a fall at 
Butterfly, and I am here with my brother Brody. C is for PPC Pie. C is for Rebar. Oh, we deliver Rebar, too. We carry septic chambers and septic tanks. We carry hydraulic oil and motor oil. Does anybody need a little brother? See if all of mine suffice. At First National Bank, we put you first with local lending and local decisions. Our First National Bank lenders are a part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FNB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Futures! Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Shh, sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal. And it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent. Not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com. Or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. La Follette Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. Central visiting Campbell, the Lady Cougars down to our right, warming up in all black numbers. Black trim down to our left, the Lady Bobcats of Central, coached by LeBrandon Marie. Jason Kitts is the top man for Campbell, the head coach of the Lady Cougars. Here are the probable starters for the Central Lady Bobcats. In the backcourt, Avery Brewer, a freshman, joining her, Addison Brewer, a junior. The forwards, Cadence Horner and Q Houston. And Scout Horner getting a start. will also play a guard spot tonight for Coach Marie's Lady Bobcats. Coming in six wins, ten losses, 0-2 in the district. A game last Tuesday at Central was lost by the Lady Bobcats to Jefferson County, 70-50. They'll play at West on Friday as the district schedule continues. For Campbell, without the services of Lacey Pemberton, out for a few more days with an ankle injury, and then... Lexi Morris out for the rest of the season with a knee injury. We'll start tonight at the forwards, Bella Lester, number 10, 5'9", sophomore. Up front, Emma Brandenburg, 5'10", junior for the Lady Cougars. Sailor Hutchison and Carly Rutherford in the backcourt. Hutchison, 5'8", sophomore, 16 points. The game's leading scorer last night in the tough loss to Oneida. Carly Kiss, the shooting guard, 5'8", sophomore. Destiny Rutherford will also play a guard slash forward for Campbell County as the Lady Cougars come in. Seven wins, ten losses, one and one in the district. The loss last night to Oneida, 60-52 outside the district. And then at Powell on Friday is where the district schedule continues for the Lady Cougars, coached by Jason Kitts, assisted by Ryan Browning, Adam Ellison, Brooke Kitts, and Jessica Stanley. For Brandon Marie is assisted by former Cougar Adam Smith and Susan Davidson on the staff for Central. Back in a moment as we'll get this one started here tonight on Brown Court. Campbell hosting Central on the WLAF Dual Tire Shop Sports Network. This is former Lady Cougar, Dr. Jill Cox Browning. If you can't see the scoreboard, come on down and see me in the Walmart Vision Center. Better Vision begins with a phone call to former Lady Cougar, Dr. Jill Browning, 423-566-5850. I can see the scoreboard. I can see the scoreboard. See Dr. Jill Browning inside the Walmart Eye Center open Monday through Thursday. Appointments are available. Hi, this is Kimberly Burge here at Burge Screen Printing. We work to bring your idea to reality. We specialize in custom screen printing, direct to garment, full color printing for all your apparel needs. We also do full color printing on signs, banners, and much more. Hey, this is Larry Burge. Stop by and see us today in downtown La Follette at 225 East Central Avenue or call 423-562-3044. 562-3044. Go Cougars! You're on the move every day. You're mobile. 
and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423-201-9799. Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stop Lot 10 on East Central at Cumberland Avenue. This is Lace to Pearls for Girls in downtown La Folle, and this is Jennifer. We're here to serve. We would love to be your personal shopper. We have ladies' collection of clothing in here along with little girls' collection. So let us shop for you. Come and see us Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays in downtown La Follette. This is Skeeter with Doyle's Tire Shop. We've been in the same spot since the 1990s. We continue serving you with the same friendly service and top-notch name brand tires as my dad Doyle did when he first opened up. Whether you're a contractor or you're just handling a project around the house or farm, CNO Metal Sales has the best prices in the tri-state. Metal roofing custom cuts as well as delivery are available from CNO Metal. Be sure and ask us about our lifetime warranty on metal. Matt Klein can handle your big or small jobs from one piece of metal to a hundred. Select from 22 colors. CNO Metal Sales is right behind O'Reilly's Auto Parts in Middlesboro. Just take a left at the first stoplight and CNL is on the right. See or call Matt at 606-248-5 this is Matthew Klein, former Cougar number 42. Come see me at CNL Metal. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. You work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. There are two types of hot water heaters, thankless and tankless. The thankless kind work like this. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. Hold off on that. I'm hopping in the shower. Renai tankless water heaters work this way. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. No problem. You get an endless supply of hot water even for multiple tasks at the same time. With a natural gas water heater from PCUD, you get hot water twice as fast as same size electric and for about half the cost. Chop down your hot water energy cost hundreds of dollars a year with PCUD in La Follette or Rocky Top. Renai Tankless Water Heaters, the hot way to heat water. And now your starting lineups. First from the Lady Bobcats of Central, number two, Avery Brewer. Number 12, Cadence Horner. Number 13, Q Houston. Number 21, Addison Brewer. And number 24, Scout Collins. And now your Lady Cougars of Campbell County. Number 10, Bella Lester. Number 14, Destiny Rutherford. 
Number 15, Carly Kitt. Number 33, Sailor Hutchison. And number 41, Emma Brandenburg. The Lady Cougars, of course, coached by Jason Kitts, assisted by Ryan Browning, Adam Ellison, Brooke Kitts, and former Lady Cougar, Jessica Stanley. Central in all red, black numerals, crimson white. Central atop the numbers on the fronts of the jerseys. Campbell in home white. This is a different jersey than last night. This is a white jersey, white trunks, blue stripes down either side, and the insignia, the script Cougars on the fronts of the jerseys atop the numbers. Lester for Campbell at 5'10", 5'9", steps into the center circle and will jump with Houston. There's the tap controlled. It is Central's basketball. The officials tonight, the referee William No, the umpires Charlie Phillips and J.B. Brown. To the left, into the floor, Campbell uh, Central operates. Campbell opens up in a man-to-man. -man. Basket to our left, Central on top. This is Addison Brewer, far side, reaching catch made by Horner, and the ball goes out of play. It'll stay with the Lady Bobcats of Central. Coached by Landon LeBrandon Marie. Basket to our left. This is Horner shuffling through to the far side, picked up by Rutherford and the man-to-man -man for Campbell. Campbell zoned, I think, maybe every second last night. <coughs> it's a tough loss to Oneida. Front court basket to our left, deep near corner. This is Q Houston throwing it to Brewer. Central very deliberate now. Houston left side for a three. Long miss. Campbell County has the rebound. Here's Hutchison with it. Stops her dribble. Gets help from Kitts. And Campbell has its first crack on offense. Lead pass. Brandenburg fakes. Shoots. Scores! Left side. Left hand. Brandenburg picks up where she left off last night. 11 points. A dozen rebounds. Campbell ahead 2-0. We played a minute. Front court basket to our left. Central with the basketball. In all red. Campbell Manning. Brandenburg way out. Her man is Houston. Quite a mismatch there. Houston, the smaller of the two. Steal by Rutherford for Campbell. One on one. She'll drive. Right side. Shoot and score. Rutherford and Campbell ahead fourth to nothing. So the Lady Cougars with early baskets. Jumping on top, four nothing. 628 and counting first quarter. Central basket to our left. Hutchison meets Brewer at the top of the key. Handoff pass comes to Horner. We have two Horners and two Brewers in this lineup, or at least on the roster for Central. Nope, they're in the lineup. Front court, basket to our left. Central, this is Addison Brewer. And the ball is tipped out of play at the sideline in front of the Cougar bench. Near a standing Jason Kitts. Q Houston will toss it in play on the far side. Front court needs somebody to cut to the ball, and there she is. That's Addison Brewer. Deep far corner, picked up by Kitts, man-to-man. -man. Six minutes even to play, 4-0, Campbell ahead. Central has shot once. It got the tap, held the ball for the better part of a minute. Campbell came down and scored quickly, then the Snowbird by Ruth for a second to go to make it 4-0. Handoff pass goes to Addison Brewer. Now back to Houston on the near side. Houston left of the circle. As Central just uh, content to play pitch and catch. Campbell County has Brandenburg on the far block with Houston. Now driving through, this is Brewer. Shot is no good. Tipped out of play, last touched by Central. Campbell's basketball. Avery Brewer on the miss down the left side. 4-0 Campbell. Lester to toss it and play against full court pressure. It will come in to Rutherford. Double hand pass far side to Hutchison. Front court pass comes to Kitts after it was tipped. Kitts recovers. Front court down the near side. Basket to our right. Handoff pass to Rutherford. Inside pass. Brandenburg lays it up. Yes! The Berg with four. Campbell with a 6 nothing lead. Time remaining, 5.06. First quarter. It seems like they're looking for her tonight, Jim, as well. Looking inside with her. They're looking for her as well. And she's two for two. She being Emma Brandenburg, number 41 for the Cougars. Jumper right side. This is Houston with a miss. Campbell with a rebound. Hutchison snags it. Bounces it up the far side to Rutherford. Hair in her face. Pass ahead. Intercepted. This is Avery Brewer with the pick. Front court. One-on-one -on -one break. Driving. And she will be charging. Good job. Hutchison draws the foul. 
Not often you see it that way, but Campbell comes up with the turnover. Credit Hutchison. This is on Avery Brewer, her first, team's first. As Central will see Campbell work it in against full court pressure. Down to our left, baseline, backcourt. Lester will toss it and play. 440 left, opening quarter, 6-0 Campbell. And the Cougars have scored on every possession. Inside pass is stolen by Central, re-stolen by Lester, and it goes out of play on the far sideline, stays with Central, or goes to Central. As Lester and Houston hit the deck, Lester had tossed it away, went back and almost recovered it for her team. Houston will toss it and play far side in front of the Campbell bench at the left end of the floor. It's Brewer and Brewer, Houston, Horner and Horner for Central. Front court, Central in red, yet to put up points. We played almost midway through the first quarter. Driving shot, no good, a running shot. Two-shot violation as Campbell has defending. But we're not sure who that's on there. Maybe on Lester, just saw the, the one come up from the official's finger. So Bella Lester with her first foul, so each team with a foul. To the stripe is Avery Brewer, a freshman, number two in the red and black and white. Toss good. So Central's on the board, at least through a free throw avenue here. 4.23 to play, first quarter. Brewer breaks the ice for Central. Second toss, swishing through. So Central's on the board. Campbell has the ball, a hit 6-2. Long lead pass comes to Central, intercepted. On the inbound, the four-court pressure restolen by Pitts and Hutchison. As Hutchison will bring it across the stripe on a pass down the near side to Rutherford. Rutherford hands it off to Lester. Lester, jumper, right side of the key for three. In, out, no good. Rebound chased down by Hutchison. It goes out of play on the far sideline. Last touch by the red and black. It stays with Campbell. So Hutchison credit Hutchison with the hustle. And Campbell maintains possession. Lester toss it and play far side front court basket to our right near the central bench. Here's Hutchison at the free throw line. Bounce pass to a moving Kitts. Nice. Kitts takes the bounce pass, working her way to the bucket down the right side. That's a hard side bank. Take it to the bank. Big play for Campbell. 8-2 Campbell. Jumper right side. Central back the other way. Ball tipped out of play on the miss. No. Goes out of play. It's Campbell's basketball. A team rebound for the orange and blue. And, and Jim, that's going to be open all night right there That because they're overplaying defensively in that wing, and they, she can backdoor. Of course, that's a good pass by <laughs> by Hutchinson as well. Good finish by Kitts. Kitts with two, had 11 last night, all in the second half in the Campbell County's gallant comeback that fell just a bit short. Lester, left of the key, front court. Across the floor comes to Hutchinson in the lane, driving, running, shooting, scoring! Hutchinson, nice, soft, left-hand little running jumper. She has two. Campbell has an eight-point advantage at 10-2. to two. Central, front court basket to our left. Ball tip, stolen by Kitts. Chases it down in front court. Kitts, two on two, driving. Rutherford on the pass, no good. Rebound taken away by Central. Here's Central in front court. Quick down the floor, Cadence Horner. And tries to throw it inside, and a foul is called on Campbell. So the foul on Campbell County is number 41, Emma Brandenburg, her first, team second. Three minutes even to play in a 10-2 game in favor of Campbell. At the stripe, Cadence Horner, a junior. First of two is good. And what Jason's doing defensively, Jim, what, what, what he's doing is he's keeping Emma just in the middle of the floor. Okay, he's, she's not following her man around. Not having to move much. And, Correct. of course, uh, positioning for rebounds. Uh, also, there. you know, keep her out of foul trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Second free throw, back iron miss. Campbell with the rebound. Rutherford pulls it away. 10-3, Campbell in front. As Brandenburg has picked up her first foul. Here is Hutchison, brings it across the stripe on a dribble. Shuffles it near corner. Deep corner three for Kitts. Got it. A three by Carly Kitts. She has five. That's a Dr. Jill Browning. 20-20 Trey. Everybody saw that one. Campbell in a double-digit advantage here, plus 10. Basket to our left. Central. Ball knocked away from Newbert. And it's taken by Campbell. Kitts for the Lady Cougars. Bouncing it to Hutchison. Will stop. Will bounce it low. Brandenburg left side, left hand. Good. Brandenburg with six. Central wants a timeout. 15-3, 2.21 to play. Campbell in front, and Campbell County clicking on all cylinders here early, Don Atherton, as uh, the Lady Cougars sometimes a little sluggish offensively. Not so here tonight. I think, I think Gamma's getting down the floor real well. She's getting down the floor and getting positioned, uh, and uh, she's beating her, beating her people down the floor and getting open. And, uh, good to see that uh, our, uh, that, uh, <coughs> that Sailor's seeing that opening, you know, and those early mismatches and getting into the ball. 
Well, you know, a little confidence goes a long way for Brandenburg. I think she had <laughs> such a nice game last night, yes. 11 points, 12 rebounds, and I think that's carried over some tonight too. Yes, and, you know, what, what gets me is that yeah, I have to applaud her for using her left hand. When, when well, you, she's, when, uh, when you, when you two of her buckets to. have come left hand, yeah. When you don't have to. <laughs> don't have to, but she did. <laughs> yeah. Front court, 217 to play. Central basket to our left, following the central timeout. Central brings on Darlene Smith, deep far corner. Smith, the jumper, long miss. Snag rebound by Horner. Cross court pass comes to Horner. That's Scout Horner. And then it is Cadence Horner. Front court, central basket to our left. Driving shot is going to be taken away by Brandenburg. A jump basketball. Campbell's possession. How about that? Forcing the turnover. Taking it away is Brandenburg for Campbell. 15 3, Lady Cougars. And, and Reagan Davis came in for Destiny there. Thank you. Here's Lester throwing it to Davis in the front court down the far side. Number 12 is Davis. Fingertip catch by Lester. Throws it off the one-hand dribble to Hutchison between the circles. Starts left, comes right, hands it off to Kitts. Scoops it to Lester. Lester thought about a three. Spins at the free throw line. Double team. Pass comes near side. Hutchison. Hutchison will drive down the right side of the lane. Is bumped on a block by Central. And for Central, this is Darlene Smith with her first foul. Team foul three. Non-shooting violation as we face the basket to our right. Lester is on the near side at the end line. And it is on the near side, Davis, to work out. And she springs out. The pass instead goes under the bucket to the far side to Kitts. To Hutchison inside Brandenburg. Set, shoot, scores! Brandenburg with eight. She shot it with the right hand that time, Don, <laughs> on the left side of the bucket. Front court, Campbell ahead by 14. Center with the basketball, 17-3. She was just making sure. Just, uh, yeah. Letting us know that she can use that right hand. Yeah. <laughs> Hadn't, hasn't forgotten. Jumper, right side of the free throw line is good by Central. This is Scout Horner's first two. And, in fact, uh, Central with the bucket, making it 17-5. to five. After a 14-point lead by Campbell, here's a double dribble on Kitts. So it was 17-3. to three. And now with 52.9 seconds to go in the first quarter. Central will bring on Anna Newbert. No, Anna Newbert was in the game. We'll check here. Central brings back in Addison Brewer. So Central against a 2-3 zone by Campbell. Campbell almost a steal. Central with the basketball. Time winding down. 43 seconds. First quarter. This is Horner making a move. Ball knocked away. Stolen by Rutherford. Rutherford, Campbell County. Two on three break. Rutherford stops. Holds up. Throws to a trailing Kitts. The three, yes, right side of the key for Carly Kitts, who has eight, including two threes. That's the Dr. Joe Browning 2020 tray, and everybody saw that one. Skip pass, central, far side, driving is Horner. Nearly threw it away. Saves it, far corner, trapped by Campbell. Coach Jason Kitts says it's our ball, it is. Campbell in a trap on that far sideline, forcing the turnover, and Campbell has perhaps the last shot of the first quarter, 14 seconds. 20 to 5 lead in favor of Campbell. I'm, I'm glad to see Carly getting hot early here. Well, and taking the shots. Yes. You know, the Lady Cougars are just so hesitant to shoot at times. Here's Hutchison. Three seconds to Davis. Two seconds. Davis, too far away. Can't get it to go. Did not get the shot launched. And we played one. The score at the end of the first quarter at Brown Gym, Campbell 20, Central 5. You're following Lady Cougar basketball on the WLAF Dolls Tire Shop Sports Network. Quality and Clayton go hand in hand. That's quality constructed homes from Clayton Homes. The staff at Clayton Homes, located right here at home in Campbell County at Jacksboro, is ready to help you through all the steps of home ownership, from selecting the home that's just right for you to putting the keys in your hand. Since 1956, Clayton Homes has been making dreams come true. See the home folks about your new dream home from Clayton Homes, 110 North Street near Jacksboro Middle School. Call or just come on by. Carly Kitts, Emma Brandenburg, eight points apiece for Campbell. Two coming from Destiny Ruth, Singler Hutchison, and Don Atherton Campbell has a commanding 20-5 lead to start the second quarter here on Brown Court over Central, Central's Lady Bobcats. And, and you mentioned uh, before the break, uh, Jim, how uh, sometimes the, the girls seem like they're hesitant to shoot. 
And what happens, I think, in practice, Jimmy, you, you get so robotic. You know, you, you want to run the play and, and do what you're supposed to do, and you forget, forget about, oh, by the way, I should shoot here. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I, I never had that problem. <laughs> okay. Never had that problem. Well, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. So Somebody didn't have to tell me twice to shoot uh, that way. Well, I tell you, uh, Jimmy Pierce and Jerry Dagley shouted a lot of things at me over my career, but they never shouted, shoot. Nobody ever had to tell me to do that. <laughs> As Central will have the basketball on the near side of the floor, we're seeing some discussion with uh, umpire Charlie Phillips and Coach Jason Kitts. Not sure if there's something going on on the floor or what we're – little holdup here is. Maybe somebody entering the game down to our left and they're pausing action to allow that to happen. As we can't see to our left because of the Cougar crazies all standing. And now teams will go back to their benches. Okay, still not uh, – Able to see what's uh, taking place there. The officials seem a little, a little perplexed. We're going to keep it right here. So Campbell County with eight minutes to play to start the second quarter, ahead 20 to five. And uh, Brandenburg and Kitts, this is probably the best start for both those players on the same night. Yes, and you know they, Sailor already has four assists. Oh. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. this this team is very unselfish, and you know, it's it's really neat to see, watch that as well. You know, it's it's uh, they make that extra pass, and it's uh, uh, you know, I think it's really important, especially against you know early in the game, is to make the defense work. Well, there may be. Are you thinking there's some blood on the floor here? Yeah, maybe. I, yes, I think there was some blood on the floor. Okay, that, yes, that's the wiping off. Our assistant coach, Adam Ellison, is down here. We can see him now, where they're working along the near sideline. Not sure if that came from a, a fan or a player. So Campbell returns with Rutherford Davis, Lester Hutchison, and now Reagan Stanfield's in the game. For Central, it's Avery Brewer along with Q Houston. And uh, the other Brewer, Anderson Brewer, number 24. Yeah. Number tw that's 21, <coughs> uh, Anderson Brewer. Scout Harper is number 24. For Central, number 12, Cadence Horner is in the game. The red and black clad Lady Bobcats out of Fountain City. Basket to our left. Q Houston thought about a shot. Campbell County is uh, zoning. 2-3, sort of a matchup. And Central working it around, trailing 20-5 to, to Campbell. Campbell jumped on top, 6 to nothing, and Hassel is called on Houston. The ball comes bobbling loose. I don't know that she had possession to travel, but nonetheless, that's the call as Lester will toss it and play far side. Backcourt with Central applying some pressure. A 2-1-1-1 press, it appears. Pass comes to Lester, up the near side of Rutherford in front court, down the near sideline. Continues the dribble, wheels back out, double team there. Throws it to Lester, right side of the key, thought about a three, inside pass, Stanfield lays it up, high off the glass, missing, rebound and taken by Horner for Central. Horner, front court, this is Cadence Horner. Now left wing for a three, Central, it can't go. Hutchison with the board, streaks up the far side with a left-hand dribble. It's a two-on-two uh, -two break. Hutchison driving all the way through. Slips down. A blocking foul is called on Central. And Hutchison is up and okay. That didn't look so uh, so good there, the way she slipped and fell. This foul is tagged against Addison Brewer, her first. Team foul four. It looked like she was almost like hyperextended her knee. Well, I was yeah, afraid yeah, that was the case. Yeah. But she, I think she just maybe kind of gently slid yes. uh, in, the, in hindsight here, 20-5. to five. That is team foul three. Inside jumper by Brandenburg. Good. She has 10. Brandenburg checked in and Kitts did too during that little pause. Front court central, 22-5. to five. Campbell continues to build on what was its largest lead at 15, now 17. Turnaround jumper inside, missing by Horner. And a foul is called on the attempt for the rebound. And this is tagged against Campbell County. I thought I saw a five go up in the hand of the official. These new scoreboards were supposed to have the, the fouls on them. They get here and they don't. And uh, so it makes it kind of tough because the officials' backs are toward us when they make the call to the scorer's table. Q Houston makes the first of two free throws. And I'm not sure that fouls are going to be a problem for Campbell County tonight at this stage, 22-6. to six. Q Houston back at the basket to our left for the free toss. It rattles away. No good. Rebound Lester for Campbell. Score stays 22 to six. Campbell, I guess some moderate pressure. Rutherford in front court, triple teamed on the far sideline. Ball slapped from a her out of hand, out of play, and it stays with Campbell. 
When, you, when you're up like this, Jim, it's, 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 there's still a lot of game left. Well, of course, and you don't want to get lazy or yes, uh, right. uh, and, complacent. And, and, yes, and that's what they, you don't want to see right now. Lester driving, shooting, missing, rebound loose, saved by Central. This for Central is Horner, throws it to front court, lead pass, stolen by Kitts for Campbell, down at the end line, down to our left. Double team is there, and it's stolen by Central. Shot up, no good, rebound, follow, shot blocked, foul call. Thought Kitts got away with a clean block there, not so. So Carly Kitts unofficially with her second foul. And Campbell, the Campbell Lady Cougars, up by 16. Are you bringing me some numbers? Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Free throw is no good. We're getting some numbers for the Central Bobcats. We had a couple of JV players that Coach Joe Ward wants to play in the varsity game. And the, the numbers wound up being switched out after the JV game. Second free throw is good. This for Central's Addison Brewer. So Brewer one for two at the stripe. Her first point. Central down by 15, 22 to 7. Central has scored a couple of points to the Cougars, too, these last couple of minutes. Front court, Davis has it knocked away. Stolen by Central. Central, Avery Brewer, one-on-one, -on -one, driving, shooting, left side, missing, rebound, Kitts for Campbell. Kitts needs some help. Left hands the pass to Brandenburg. Brandenburg still in backcourt. Ball is deflected. Stolen by Central. Avery Brewer bouncing it in the lane to Cadence Horner. Now back, right side jumper. No good by Central. Lester with the board for Campbell. Has it wrestled away, and a jump basketball is called possession arrow Campbell. As the Lady Cougars, a, a quick whistle uh, for the jump basketball. And now replacements come on as Davis checks out. Hutchison, Rutherford, Lester, Brandenburg. The Campbell four plus five, that's Kitts, plus one, that's Kitts. And Central brings into the game number three for the first time, Kaya Barnes. Ball nearly saved the near sideline by Brandenburg, and the press is bothering Campbell some. Lady Cougars getting a little sloppy here, up 22 to 7, and now timeouts requested. 5:31 to play, 22 to 7, and for the last maybe the last part of the first quarter, early part of the second quarter, you get the feeling that Campbell County may be kind of uh, going a little cool here, maybe kind of getting out of their intensity level that they had so high the first quarter, most of the first quarter. Yes, I, you know, <coughs> Central Press is really. Not that effective right now, but what, what we're doing is just throwing bad passes, just un, un kind of playing, into, playing, unfor, playing unfor, into their hands. Yeah, unforced turnovers, you know, just right there is wide open, you know, Destiny threw it over uh, Brandenburg's head, but you know, it, you know, you just got to take your time on this. Even while you're ahead, you just you still got to run your offense and do what you're supposed to do. Central to toss and a play down to our right, near sideline, back court. Bringing it across the stripe is Avery Brewer, a freshman for Central. Bounce pass deep far corner, Barnes. Campbell is back to the 2-3 zone. Opening tonight in the man. We saw the zone quite a bit last night. Here's Central. This is Barnes, right side of the key. Throws it to a posting high Horner. Cross-court pass. Jumper on the way. Trickles away. Rebound with authority. Hutchison for Campbell. Bring across the stripe. Result down the far sideline. Left-hand dribble. Driving all the way through. And a charge is called as Hutchison... Levels Barnes on the block far side. And this is the first foul tonight on Sailor Hutchison. So the ball turns back to, started to say Cincinnati, not sure where that came from. Turns back <laughs> to Central. Five minutes to play in the second quarter. 22 to seven. Front court. This is Central basket to our left. It's been a long time since anyone has put up any points. Now Central with the basketball deep near corner. Jumper by Brewer pops in, pops out. Here is Barnes with the rebound for Central. Clears to Horner. Horner throws it far side. Barnes, deep far corner. This is Cadence Horner driving, shooting. Shot no good. Rebound on the near side. Long rebound taken by Lester for Campbell. Lester in backcourt with the basketball. Throws to Hutchison who brings it across the strike. Thank you, sir. I sure appreciate that. Getting our numbers situated for Central here. As the... Uh, Cougars and Bobcats play here in just a little while as the ball goes out of play, stays with Campbell. And we've come down five straight times, five straight possessions, and haven't scored. Haven't, you know, so uh, <laughs> this is the time we need to put one down. Well, you know, I, I mentioned that it seems like Campbell County's lost some of its intensity. Pass comes in from the baseline by Stanfield to Hutchison, nearly stolen, saved by Lester. Deep far corner, Stanfield for a jumper. Got it! Greg and Stanfield. 
A big three last night, one here tonight, a Dr. Jill Browning 2020 tray, and everybody saw that one, 25 to 7. So that little uh, drought ends. Rebound on the miss the other way by Stanfield for Campbell. Under four minutes to play. Lester brings it to front court. Off the dribble pass, goes to Hutchison between the circles. Basket to our right. Hutchison down the left side of the lane, driving through. Shot is missing, and a foul is called on Central. As Hutchison drives to the basket, we'd like to have that one back. This is tagged on Kaya Barnes, her first team foul, four on Central. Campbell has five fouls as a team. It, it seems like when she's going down that side, it's, it's like it's like the Red Seas partying or something because they, they just open up, and she has that easy left-hand layup. <laughs> when she ain't will put down, but she got fouled. She has uh, such a knack for doing that, 25-7. Yeah. to seven. Hutchison at the stripe as Central brings into the game to Kayla Chandler. Hutchison, toss, good. So Hutchison for Campbell, one for two, 26 to seven, 3.43 to play in the first half at Central. Campbell County defending the other way and a player control foul, Central. Or is it? No. Not that uh, Charlie Phillips held up the hand behind his head. This is tagged on Campbell County's Bella Lester. Lester's second unofficially. As Campbell is in the bonus, Central not yet. Free throw is good. This by Avery Brewer. Brewer three for three at the stripe tonight. Her team to within 18. Second toss good. So four for Brewer. It's 26 to nine. Campbell County's largest lead, 19. Here's Stanfield. Throws it off the foot of the central player. That comes off the toe of Chandler, and it will stay with Campbell County. Down to our right, the basket to our right. Stanfield on the end line will toss it to play this side of the glass. High pass, Brandenburg catches it, one bounce, turns, left hands it up. Got it! Brandenburg with a dozen tonight. She may be working on her career high, 28 to 9, Campbell. 319 and counting, second quarter. Basket to our left is Central. Driving, baseline. This is Brewer. Comes back out and turnover Central. Campbell's basketball. Campbell matching his largest lead here again at plus 19. 310 remaining. Second quarter. Campbell has led from the outset. I think at the beginning of the game, Central moved the ball real well against our, our, our uh, zone here, but uh, lately they just get it in the corner and don't, don't go any further. Got to move the basketball against the zone for sure. Driving through here. Yep, left side. Got it. Hutchison with four as that one falls through. 30 to nine in favor of Campbell. Here's Central for three. In, out, no good. Rebound put back up by Cadence Horner, and a foul is called. Shot misses. And this sends Central to the line. Shooting violation. Emma Brandenburg with her second foul, coming at 2.47 to play in the second quarter. And for uh, <coughs> Sailor to open up right there, Emma had a, a nice pick. A, a high screen at the top there, they opened her up. Free throw good by Kate Torner. She will have a second. She is two for three at the stripe. Central has shot to more free throws than Campbell. Campbell has shot two. Collectors and more free throws. Free throw no good. Rebounded by Campbell. Lester with the board to Hutchison, front court. Hutchison driving through, puts up a shot, got it. Looked like she had to struggle with that, maybe maybe even partially, even partially held. Uh, she has seven unofficially for Campbell County. 2.28 to play, Campbell ahead, 22, 32 to 10 is the score. In favor of Campbell County. Basket to our left, central. This is Horner with the basketball, driving through, and as she travels, she's fouled. This likely is against Rutherford, and that is against Bella Lester. Bella Lester. I had Bella with three. That may not be right, as it is Brewer checking back in, Avery Brewer checking back in, and Kaya Barnes checks out for Central. At the free throw line is Cadence Horner, a junior. At the stripe, she's two for four. Toss, in, out, no good. Rebound, Campbell County. Both teams in the... We'll change that. I thought there was a shoot. Yeah, both teams. Central's in the single bonus. Campbell yet to get there. Central's committed four fouls. Lester hands it off to Stanfield on the near side. Right wing. Basket to our right. Here's Lester driving, throwing deep far corner. This is Rutherford for a three. It's good. Rutherford has five. Campbell County has a 25 
point lead. That's the Dr. Joe Browning 2020 trade. 35 to 10, time remaining, 145, second quarter at Brown Court. Central, left side of the key, three by Brewer. It's missing, kissing the iron on the near side, and it's missed and rebounded by Lester for Campbell. Lester in front court, driving, shooting, missing. Rebound Central, far side, 90 seconds to go till halftime. Here's Central in front court. Horner in a hurry, throws it near side. Jumper is good, it's a three. Addison Brewer, the junior, has four, just like that. Central has 13 points after trailing by 19 and then 25 here just a shake ago. Front court, Stanfield against some moderate pressure. The basketball, Hutchison, deep near corner, Stanfield. She can hit it, lets it go, long miss, rebounded by Central. Right there in front of Rutherford is Horner to snag it away. Jumper left side of the key again for Central, same spot. This is Scout Horner this time. Horner with five, same spot as Brewer made one a moment ago. Timeouts requested to pause for us. 55 seconds to go second quarter. Campbell 35, Central 16. You're following Campbell basketball on the WLAF Thrills Tire Shop Sports Network. BP is back. Rice Oil has brought back BP to Big O's Get and Go and Cumberland Crossing BP. BP provides the energy that keeps Campbell County and America moving and helps drive the U.S. economy. Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco from Rice Oil, La Follette. 35 to 16, Campbell ahead of Central on round court. 55 seconds to play. Second quarter, Lady Cougars jumped on top, six to nothing. Then it was 6-2, built that lead out to 10-2. to two. Into the first quarter, 20-5. to five. We saw that lead balloon to 19-28-9. to, 28 to nine. Since that score, Campbell has scored seven points. Central has scored seven. However, in the interim, Campbell had a 25-point advantage at 35-10. to 10. Stanfield down to our left, the baseline, backcourt, to toss it and play against full-court pressure by Central. She will bounce it in play to Rutherford, who's trapped immediately. And then Stanfield is there trying to help out the ball is tipped out of play in the near corner as Campbell County playing right into Central's hands, getting trapped in that near corner. Then Stanfield gets in the area and brings another defender with her. Here on the near sideline in front of the Cougar Crazies, Rutherford will toss it in play. No change that that is Lester to throw it in. It's Rutherford with the basketball, 48 seconds, stolen by Central. Avery Brewer driving, shooting, scoring. Avery Brewer with six for Central, 17-point game. Central with eight straight points, front court. Central with the interception, 35 seconds. I'm going to go. Brewer on the steal. Skip pass to Brewer. Left side of the key for three. It is no good. Rebound taken by Stanfield for Campbell. And then it's wrestled away. Or is it a jump basketball? Jump basketball as Central steps in with Ja'Kyla Chandler to tie up Campbell County. And it's a jump basketball going to Central. 35 to 18. It was 25, 25 point gap just a moment ago. Actually, about a minute and a half ago. Front court, Central with the basketball. Skip pass to Brewer. Deep near corner. Driving shot is no good by Central. Tapped out, say, by Central. Here's a jumper. Shot's blocked by Stanfield. Out of play at the end line down to our left. The ball stays with Campbell. Thought one official was calling a hold. He, not sure what he was doing over there. 35 to 18. 10 seconds. Jumper, Central. No good. Rebound, Campbell County. Leo Woodson. In during the break to Rutherford, now to Woodson, three seconds. Woodson throws to front court, Davis. Davis will shoot, counts if it goes, it misses. And we play two quarters on Brown Court. Campbell, 35, Central 18. You're following Campbell basketball on the WLAF Thules Tire Shop Sports Network. And we're waiting to see if we have a performance from the cheerleaders or dance team. I do not see anybody making their way to the floor, so we'll take a break and be right back on the WLAF Thules Tire Shop Sports Network. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in the surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing, 423-566-6561. 
Citizens Bank is a locally owned and operated bank serving communities in East Tennessee. The bank was established in 1934 with three guiding principles at its foundation. Assurance of safety to depositors, a high standard of service to customers, and a genuine desire to serve the community. These principles are the core factor in the success that has lasted over 85 years and grown Citizens Bank to the renowned financial institution it is today. To learn more about Citizens Bank, visit CitizensBank24.com. I'm Tracy Lobertini with Alco Builders and Realty. Take a look at what we have for you today. Thanks, Tracy. Now here's a beautiful three-bed, two-bath home located at 259 Clover Circle in Jacksboro in the desirable Wheeler Landing subdivision. Recent upgrades on the home include beautiful hardwood floors throughout, neutral paint, updated light fixtures, butcher block countertops, stainless steel appliances, a new roof, and more. The primary bedroom has an in-suite bath with a new walk-in shower. The exterior offers a two-car garage with concrete drive, a covered front porch, and a level lot. This home has all the amenities you can want and more, currently priced at $275,000. If you're looking to buy or to sell, my name's Tracy Lobertini. 423-562-0638. Just give me a call. Hello Cougar fans, I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. Gray Insurance is your local independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. Inslee's Tire and Service provides road service going to customers stuck on the highway somewhere with tire or engine trouble. Servicing tractor trailer trucks is another service offered along with mechanical work, alignment, and lifts. Hensley Tire Center now stocks gear oil and hydraulic fluid in five-gallon buckets, also DEF and bar oil. Hensley Tire Center is on Baker Highway at the Norma Turnoff at Huntsville, 423-663-2142. And see Hensley Tire Center in La Follette. It is intermission at John Brown Gym. Campbell County jumped on top. Six to nothing. Has not looked back. Leading 20 to 5 after the first quarter of play. Then Campbell outscored Central 15 to 13 in the second quarter to see Central score the last eight points of the first half to make it from a 25 point game to a 17 point game here at the mid game break. And officially for the Central Lady Bobcats, top score is Avery Brewer, a freshman with six points. Four of those have come from the free throw line. Four points from Addison Brewer, including a three. A couple of points from Cadence Horner at the free throw line. Q Houston with a single point. And then Scout Harper changed that Scout Horner with five, including a three. Part of that eight-point flurry there to finish the half. For Campbell in the game, 12 points from Emma Brandenburg. She has uh, been the difference for Campbell tonight. Eight points from Carly Kitts. It was Kitts and Brandenburg, that first quarter combination that really got Campbell out and running. Sailor Hutchison with seven points, those coming in the second quarter. Reagan Stan fell off the bench with a big three, a big three from Destiny Ruthford, who has five. Aaliyah Woodson has played tonight, so has Reagan Davis and Bella Lester. Those ladies have yet to score. It is intermission. It is Campbell leading Central 35-18. We'll be back in a moment on the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network. Terry's Pharmacy delivers. Whether it's at their drive throughs at the curbside, or at your doorstep, Terry's is delivering countywide. Don't want to get out of the house? Terry's will safely deliver to your door. Anxious about your pharmacy not having a drive through Terry's will seamlessly help you transfer your prescriptions so you can drive through at one of Terry's convenient locations, La Follette and Jacksboro. At the drive throughs drop off your prescription and wait in the parking lot for your phone call when it's ready. Have a question? Want to transfer your prescription? Just call Terry's, 423-5. 562-4928. 562-4928. No matter where you are in Campbell County, you're liable to see us on deliveries. Just honk and wave. At United Cumberland Bank, our number one focus is people. You see, our employees are our largest shareholders, and they are dedicated to ensure your financial success. And one of the biggest financial decisions you can make is a home loan, and we will help every step of the way. Buying a home is a huge decision. So is choosing the right lender. Find out more at unitedcumberland.com. United Cumberland Bank. Generations of trust. Neighbors you know. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. All loans subject to credit approval. Hi, I am Bailey Ball from A Fall at Multiply, and I am here with my brother Brody. See us for PPC Pop. 
See, that's for rebar. Oh, we deliver rebar, too. We carry septic chambers and septic tanks. We carry hydraulic oil and motor oil. Does anybody need a little brother? See if all of mine suffice. At First National Bank, we put you first with local lending and local decisions. Our First National Bank lenders are a part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FNB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Futures! La Follette Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. This is former Lady Cougar, Dr. Jill Cox Browning. If you can't see the scoreboard, come on down and see me in the Walmart Vision Center. Better Vision begins with a phone call to former Lady Cougar, Dr. Jill Browning, 423-566-5850. I can see the scoreboard. I can see the scoreboard. See Dr. Jill Browning inside the Walmart Eye Center, open Monday through Thursday. Appointments are available. The Campbell County Lady Cougars lead the Central Lady Bobcats as we're about set to start the second half. 35 to 18 the score. District game. Both teams coming in. Well, not both teams. 0-2 is Central in the district. Campbell is 1-1. The boys teams, each team is 0-2 in the district. And Don, this is a, a critical game. And again, the uh, district has shrunk the last couple of seasons. So fewer teams uh, to get into the tournament. And you got it. Every game is so critical because the top four get to the region. Yes, and that is important. You know, especially to be if you just the top two. If you're the top two, you got an automatic bid to the regionals. Oh, that's why, yes. <laughs> the uh, uh, you know, t just briefly talking about uh, what's happened in the first half here is the girls are at a plus five with assist turnover oh, that's ratio, good. and that's that's really good. You know, that's uh, you know, it's uh, the uh, sailor has like four assists, and you know, and Five rebounds, you know, she's just doing everything tonight. Uh, but th they're just uh, looking for Emma underneath the basket as well. They need, to, they need to get back to that, and I think they'll be okay. Well, that's how the game started, going up front to Emma Brandenburg, and, and she delivered. Yes. Sure. Has she missed a shot? I don't think she has. <coughs> if she's missed one, it's just been one. I, I think it was just a put back or something like that she might have missed. Okay, so no Brantley. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks, Coach. We're getting updates. We've uh, this uh, current, this uh, central roster looks like a, uh, <laughs> if, it, if it was in motion, it would be a Chinese fire drill. We've changed it several times, and, and that's good, but we appreciate one of the maybe central coaches. Getting, maybe they haven't got people off the street yet. There's a few <laughs> more people off the street we can get. <laughs> uh, if you can wear red and black, no, Central Central has a fine team coached by Joe Ward. Yes. And uh, Coach wanted to bring some of the players off the JV to play in this game. That's what's happened here is we're changing some numbers around and had one, one more change there. As, uh, that should be a good one tonight, Campbell and the Central Bobcats. We're set to get underway. Campbell brings back Hutchison. Lester, who will inbound in the near court, on the near side of the midcourt. Brandenburg, along with Rutherford and Kitts for Campbell County. Central is starting Chandler in this second half, along with Cadence Horner, Addison Brewer, Avery Brewer. They would not start without her. And then Scout Horner for Campbell. Campbell to bat for Central. And they went right into Emma right then. Campbell so. basket to our left, trying to get it to Emma Brandenburg. And it gets tipped out of play. Campbell working to play at the baseline down to our left. Lester to toss it in play. Far side of the glass. Lester looking, looking. Better hurry. And it comes to Brandenburg. Back to Lester. Tipped away. Saved by Lester. Far corner. Lester hands it off to Kitts. Thought about a three. Now inside Brandenburg. Block right. Maybe, maybe hook right hand. Good. Brandenburg with 14 and 1. Don't count that bucket. This is tagged on Ja'Kayla Chandler. 
perhaps Chandler was starting the, starting the second half to try to answer Brandenburg. Didn't work there. 14 for number 41 in the orange, white, and blue. Toss Brandenburg, rattles in, good. At the collectibles and more free throw strike, Brandenburg needs all scores with 15. She should touch the ball every time down the floor. At least touch it to her so they open it up to outside. 38-18, what a weapon. 2-3 zone, Campbell, basket to our right center with the ball, posting high, Chandler on the near side. Far side, posting high is Cadence Horner with the basketball for Central. Brewer, deep far corner to Brewer, back and forth, now to the near side. And I thought that was a double double, not so. Front court, Central basket to our right with the ball. This is Horner, Scout Horner, stops for dribble, throws it cross court. Avery Brewer, deep far corner, a three is unloaded. It's a long miss. Lester there to tip it and can't get to it. Laid in by Chandler. Chandler on the putback has two. Central has its first points of the second half, 38 to 20. Almost a steal by Central on the inbound. Over and back is the call. It goes to Central. I don't think that Rutherford had possession. So the official looks back at Coach Jason Kitts, throws up his thumb like that's okay. I don't think it is okay if you're the Cougar coach. No, it's not. And it's a 2-3 zone by Campbell, almost a steal by Hutchison. Pass deep far side by Chan to Chandler. Shots no good. Back up and no good. Campbell has the rebound. Kitts loses it in traffic. Now a jump basketball in Central's possession as Lester hits the deck along with Cadence Horner. And Central has possession down to our right baseline front court on the near side of the glass. Brewer to toss it in to Horner. Horner cross court Avery Brewer back to Scout Horner. Bounces it near corner. This is the Addison Brewer, 2-3 zone. This is a little bit like the game last night. We have two Horners and two Brewers in this game. Jumper for three, good, deep far corner. That's a two for Avery Brewer. She has eight to lead her team a 16-point game, 38-22. No. Campbell County against pressure. Front court, far side kits for Campbell County to a trailing Lester, right side of the key, three, it is good! Bella Lester bags one from the right side of the key. A Dr. Jill Browning, 20-20. Trey, maybe Cougars needed that one. 41 to 22. Shot missed. Central rebound. Kiss for Campbell in traffic to Rutherford. She's trapped in back court. Needs help. Slings it front court to Hutchison. Hutchison kicks it off left side. Left wing three by Lester. Pops away. Back iron miss. Saved by Kiss for Campbell. Throws it back to Lester. Will drive the lane. Shooting. Missing. Out of play at the end line. Last touch by Central. Campbell maintains possession. As for Central, Q Houston comes back on, an original starter for Ja'Kayla Chandler. She faced the basket to our left. On the right side is Lester to toss it in play. Front court, Lady Cougars. Lester, deep far corner, Hutchison. Hutchison between the circles. This is right, now left. Hutchison drives on the left side of the lane, puts up a shot, rolls away, tipped out save. Lester had a hand on it. It goes out of play, last touch by Central. Campbell's basketball, as it looked like it came off, Cadence Horner. Not so. Stays with Central or goes to Central. Campbell with some moderate backcourt pressure. Brewer bobbles the ball and throws it to the front court down the far sideline, almost to travel. Near side, this is Scout Horner, bouncing it near corner. Houston, back to Horner. Campbell has gone to a man-to-man, it appears, with Rutherford out there. The free throw line, Cadence Horner. Needs some help, bouncing it, cross court. And Central content to run some clock. 4.55 to play third quarter, 41-22. Campbell by 19. It was a 16-point game just a little bit ago. Campbell's largest lead coming at 25 tonight, 35-10. to 10. All, all they're doing, they're setting up for a three here, that's all. They're trying to move the ball around and get that go in the corner right now. Campbell's in a 2-3 okay. zone, it appears now. Central trying to make up some ground with a three. Here's Q Houston. Jeffrey right side, long miss. Rebound by Houston. Here's the three try by Central. No good. Rebound by Hutchison for Campbell County. Two players there. Long pass. Thrown away. Intercepted Central. Here's Cadence Horner with a jumper in the lane. Good. Cadence Horner with four. Central to within 17. 41-24. Kitts loses control out of play on the pass. And Campbell turns it over again. 4-0-1 to play. Central trying to draw closer 
The last time the game was a 15-point game was 22 to 7. Since that point, Central scored 17. Campbell has scored 19. Campbell County comes away with the basketball from Central. Then Hutchison loses it off her sneaker back to the midcourt line. Into backcourt it goes, and the ball turns back to Central. So Campbell County is not quite the team with the intensity that we saw in the first quarter of play. Here we are in the second quarter. Central down by 17. Pass deflected, saved by Cadence Horner. Bounces at far side, Houston. Almost a steal. Is a steal by Kitts, and then restolen by Q Houston for Central. Now jump basketball. Possession arrow, Campbell, so turnover Central. You know, there was one season, it's been several years ago, that uh, the point of emphasis that year was to let players do more of a tussle over a basketball before a jump ball was called. That's uh, obviously not the case this season. They, they, they call pretty quick in the, in the girls' game. I know that. And, and maybe uh, to keep from uh, maybe somebody fouling or getting a little rougher. Here is Central with the steal driving through. Shot blocked by Hutchison on Avery Brewer. That sends Brewer to the line to shoot two. Hutchison second foul unofficially for the Campbell County Lady Cougars. And the basket to our right. Avery Brewer, fourth for fourth to strike, has eight points to lead her team. Tops in the game, Emma Brandenburg with 15. Free throw by Brewer is good. It's a shooting violation, so two shots for her. So nine for Brewer. Stanfield checks back in. Lester checks out. Stanfield, Brandenburg, Kitts, Rutherford, Hutchison, the five for Coach Jason Kitts in a 16-point game. 3.15 left. Toss. Nice. So six for six is Brewer. She's in double digits. And it's a 15-point game, Don Atherton. Last time it was 15 points. Separating these two was 22 to seven. Central has scored 19 points since then, and Campbell has scored 19. Well, it, <coughs> I think Jason should just uh, step up the pressure here defensively. I think when they, when they start pressuring and playing better defense, their offense comes, you know. And it, I think that, that ignites them. And when you see Rutherford steal a ball or, or get a deflection, somehow offensively things happen. And, and I, I think with, with this, uh, with, with Jason's team right now, it, I, would, I would put pressure on the ball. These, the, the girls are picking up the ball uh, out here, which is, we used to call it like a dead ball, and they should go up and pressure that because she has no other dribble. And they need to go up and uh, uh, <coughs> get hands in her face and watch these uh, two girls in the corners because that's what they're going to be doing, is shooting threes. As Campbell County leads Central, 41-26, 3.15 to play third quarter. Each team with one foul. Full timeouts remaining. No, well, somebody's going to be missing a timeout. It's not been taken off the clock yet. Baseline backcourt. Kitts those in play against full court pressure to Hutchison. Rutherford now to Stanfield. It brings it across the strike down the far side, and she's trapped. Ball high above her head, throws it to backcourt. It's a save by Campbell. Ruth were there to hang on. Now a skip pass. Across the four to Kitts for a three. Yes! Carly Kitts with 11. Matching what she had last night. She has three threes on the effort tonight. That's a Dr. Jill Browning 20-20. Trey Kitts with the steal back the other way. 44-26. Campbell gets in front court. Running. Slowing up now. Waiting for Stanfield. Top of the circle. Hands it off to Hutchison. Hutchison down the left side of the lane, drive, shoots, misses, tapped out, save, goes out the end line, last touch by Central. It's Campbell's basketball. As we face the basket to our left, Stanfield to toss it in play. Now Cadence Horner checks out as we thought for a second Barnes was going to come out for Central. She stays in the game. Campbell tosses it in play to the top of the circle. Hutchison sets for a three. It is good. She kind of rolls through for her. Ten. For Hutchison, another Dr. Jill Browning 2020 trade. Campbell County has stretched the lead back out to now 21, 47, 26, just like that. Back to back threes. Front court, a blocking foul called on Emily uh, Destiny Rutherford. That is her first. And Central will bring on a replacement. Coming back into the game is Addison Brewer. And she seems to pick up cheap fouls like that. You know, she's so aggressive, but in the same token, she all of a sudden she doesn't move her feet and just reach. Gets reaches a, with her hand and gets a cheap foul. A little uh, fluff foul, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Central, a basket to our right in road red with black jerseys trimmed in white. 
shot away with red jerseys and black numbers trimmed in white. Rebound Campbell County. Front court Hutchison down the near side. Bounces it to the deep near corner. Rutherford skip pass goes to Kitts. Kitts in the far corner. Stops it after one dribble. Needs help there. Stan Phil throwing it inside to Brandenburg. Stolen away and on the stripe is the Central Lady Bobcats. Darlene Smith was there. Had the swipe but uh, stepped on the stripe. As Central brings out Houston and Brewer. Cadence Horner comes back on for Campbell. Here's Jaquela Chandler. Joined by Smith. Inside pass, Brandenburg. Puts up a shot. No good. And a little bump by Brandenburg out of frustration, I'm sure. <laughs> I think she wanted a foul call in that play, and understandably so. And uh, here's Central in front court. Almost a two by Kitts. Forced a shot up by Central. No good. Rebound Central. Puts it back up. It won't count. Ball is loose. This is Chandler with the basketball to keep it alive for Central. Deep far corner. Horner with the basketball. Now jump ball. Central's possession. As we see Lester come back in for Campbell. Brandenburg getting a breather here. Brandenburg leads all scores with 15 points, five in the second half. Change that three in the second half. Our girls need to remember to fake a pass, throw a pass. Fake a pass, throw a pass. Just like in that entry pass to Emma right there. Fake it, then throw it. 47-26. Good rule of thumb from the old coach. But we're not old, are we? Okay. No. <laughs> Front court central. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Jumper right side of the key is missing for the Lady Bobcats. Kitts chases down the rebound for Campbell. At the far side, the pass to Lester. Two on one break. Lester driving, throwing near side to Rutherford. Throws it deep far side to Kitts. For Good a pass. The wing. Good yes. Pass. Rutherford with the assist. Kitts buries the tray as she rips the ropes. Has 14. Campbell ahead by 24. Almost to its largest lead of once, what was once 25. Another Dr. Jill Browning 20-20 tray. Steal by Kitts. Kitts for Campbell. One-on-one -on -one break. We'll drive. We'll shoot. We'll score. Kitts with another take into the bank. Big play for the Campbell Lady Cougars. She has 16 to lead all scores. Hartside Bank with the big bank play of the game for Campbell County. 52 to 26. There's that largest lead now. Campbell has scored five straight. 18 seconds. Central likely holding for the last shot. Third quarter. Here's Chandler. Hands it off near side. A Cadence Horner, that is. Hands it off to Scout Horner. Back to Cadence. Jumper. 15 footer. Swishes. So Horner with points right before the horn barks here to end the third quarter. It's 52 to 28 as we head to the fourth quarter. Campbell ahead of Central. You're following Campbell Lady Cougar basketball on the WLAF Thules Tire Shop Sports Network. Tenova Medical Group is making it easier to see a primary care provider in the La Follette area quickly. Schedule an appointment online anytime at TenovaLaFollettePCP.com. Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Sorry, Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal, and it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. At the end of three, it's Campbell ahead of Central, 52 to 28. Largest lead, 26 for the Lady Cougars. Central yet to have a lead tonight, and I don't see that happening, Don, anywhere in the near, any, any time in the near future here. And, and, you know, unless they come up with a four-point shot. That's I think, right. I think we might, we might. Uh, and, uh, and they start making them. Can co we should coast a little bit here. Yeah. 16 from Carly Kitts to lead all scorers. Emma Brandenburg with 15. So 31 from those two combined of the 52 for Campbell. 10 from Sailor Hutchison. Those have been kind of quiet for her. Five from Rutherford, three from Lester tonight. And a foul is called. Nope, it nope it's gone out of play on the near sideline. As Lester to toss it in play, near sideline, front court, basket to our left. It comes to Hutchison, central man-to-man -man behind the back dribble. Hutchison works down the right side on the wing. Comes back out, hands it off to Lester. Lester for Campbell to Kitts. Kitts for Campbell to Hutchison. Left side of the key, three. Hutchison, no good. Q Houston and Central with the rebound, nearly traveled. Almost a steal, is a steal by Lester. Lester for Campbell will drive to the bucket, throws it to a trailing Rutherford, then skips it to Kitts. Same play as a moment ago. Kitts can't make it go this time. Central with the recovery. Scout Horner with the rebound. 52 to 28, Campbell by 24. It was once 26. Here's a jumper for three. Central air ball out of play at the inline down to our right. 
It turns back to Campbell. Lester for Campbell will take the bounce pass from the referee, William No. Throws it into Rutherford. Stolen by Central out of the trap. And here is Gaten's Horner. Dog by Rutherford. Throws it deep far side. Stolen by Lester for Campbell. Double hands the pass near side to Hutchison. He'll bring it across the stripe down the middle of the floor. Gets bumped. No call. Ball knocked free. Gets it back to Lester. Double hands the pass deep near the corner. Rutherford for a three. It is in, out, no good. On the run, Central with the rebound. That's Horner. Thought she nearly traveled. No, she nearly did. I guess she didn't, though, but nearly did. Front court, Central with the basket to our right. 640 and counting in the ballgame. Campbell ahead, 52 to 28. Deep far corner, Q Houston picked up by Kitts. Campbell is still uh, in that 2-3 uh, matchup. This is Brewer to the near side to Horner. Back to Brewer. Leads her team with 10 points. Front court, Central basket to our right. Continues to be content to work the ball. Maybe looking for a three. Driving through. Brewer throws up a shot. A late, late whistle. Certainly a foul, but... Uh, I thought they were going yeah, to let that go. I did, too. That foul is tagged on Reagan Stanfield. And uh, Brandenburg has to check in. This is a two-shot violation here. As Brewer has 11, she remains perfect at the free stripe. Seven for seven. Brandenburg comes on for Stanfield, joining Kitts and Hutch along with Lester and Rutherford. Back to the free stripe at the right end. Toss. Good. She's eating her Wheaties and practicing her free throws. She is Avery Brewer. Nice night for her tonight. Rutherford is trapped on the far sideline. She traveled, I thought, and then they finally yeah, call a foul. As, uh, you know, a couple of things, Jim. Butler's taking the ball out under the basket. She should be one side or the other here. And uh, hope that will come back to bite her. Well, we've seen it uh, happen once this year. It hits the backboard. Here's Hutchinson driving all the way through the other way. Yeah, that's right. I don't know why. We'll yeah. That at. But uh, I, I've wondered that myself. But again, front court, 24 point game. Campbell central with the ball. Stolen by Kitts. Kitts for Campbell. Kitts driving. Putting up a shot. She's fouled. Shot would have counted had it gone. She missed it. This foul is tagged, I think, on Scout Horner. Change that. It's on Avery Brewer, her second. Brewer with a dozen points. She's eight for eight at the free throw stripe. Here's Carly Kitts at the collectibles and more free throw line. Kitts toss. Rattles home. Good. Kitts with 17. And Campbell County, again, another night. The Lady Cougars have not shot, but a handful of free throws at the collectibles and more free throw stripe. Kitts knocks this one in as well. 18 for Kitts as she leads all scorers. Vandenberg shot a free throw, two from Hutchison, and now two from Kitts. A three, deep far corner. Nope, it's a two. Q Houston with three for Central, 56 to 32. Campbell County sees it knocked out of play. Now Carly threw that away. And it will be Central's basketball, 56-32, five and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Front court Central, Campbell still zoning. Brandenburg in the middle, to her right is Lester, to her left is Hutchison. Up top, Kitts and Rutherford. Pass comes near side, then deep near corner. Hutchison there in the zone quickly. 5-15 and counting. Campbell County. Jumped ahead, six to nothing for Central. Got a bucket. Jumper, no good. Short for the free throw line. Rebounded by Houston. Stolen by Rutherford. Then restolen by Central. And out of play on the near side. It is Central's basketball. Charlie Phillips keeping us in suspense there. As uh, yeah, he tosses it tossing in by Central Scout Horner to Brewer, far side to Addison Brewer. Addison Brewer and Avery Brewer exchanging. Put the line posting there as Cadence Horner drives for the shot. Good off the glass. Horner with eight. 56-34. 4.45 to play in the ball game. 22-point game. Lead pass for Kitts too much. Tap the back in nicely for Brandenburg. Throws it to Rutherford on the near side. Front court pass. Get to our left. Holding up. Throws it to a trailing Le Lester. Lester off the dribble pass inside Brandenburg. Left side, left hand. No good. Gets her own miss. And a push is called. This may be on Brandenburg, who appeared to me to be going straight after the basketball. But the foul is called. That's uh, the third on Berg. 56-34. Four fouls on Campbell as a team. Yeah, I thought the, the other girl pushed her. So he missed that one. 
56-34. Right wing three, central, long miss. Rebound Houston back up. It's a miss. Hutchison with the rebound for Campbell. Hook pass to front court to Lester. Lester, one on two break, driving, shooting, scoring with the left hand on the left side. Bella Lester with five tonight, 58-34. Campbell in front of Central. Central with the basketball. Deep far corner, Q. Houston steps up for a 15-footer, rattles home for her. The shooter's touch. She has five, four coming in the second half. Front court, Campbell on the pass to Lester. Lester on the move. Will drive, will throw it across the lane to Hutchins, to Brandenburg. Good! Good Brandenburg with 17. Lester with a nice bounce pass across the lane. Brandenburg with the finish. 60 to 36. Jumper far side central, long missed for three. Here's Hutch with the rebound. Has it tipped away from her out of play on the near sideline. He's knocking it away Scout Horner. And Aaliyah Woodson checks back in for the first time, or the second time tonight. Brandenburg gets a breather. Woodson, Lester, Rutherford, Hutchison, the inbounder down to our right, near sideline, backcourt is Kitts. To Hutchison, push pass front court down the far side to Woodson. Now to Lester, driving the right side of the lane, lays it up, and yes. It kind of bobbled and bobbled, finally fell on in for Bella Lester at 7, 62 to 36. Campbell County. Back to its largest lead of 26. Front court, central, basket to our right. Bailing 62 to 36. Central closed it down to a 14 point game at one time. Central shot missed, rebound by Lester. Double team finds Hudson. Hutchison. Hutchison for Campbell. Still in back court. Running jump pass, front court to Lester. Right side of the key. Lester for three. Yes! Bella Lester with 10, two of those beyond the arc of Dr. Jill Browning, 2020 trade, 65-36. Campbell's largest lead now, 29. Central to the miss, Kitts with the rebound for Campbell County. 65-36, the difference is 29. Two and a half minutes to play. We'll visit with head coach Jason Kitts on the TCAT Cougar wrap-up show coming along here in a moment. Shot missed by Campbell, rebounded by Central. We'll name our collectibles and more. Player of the game there as well. Free throw line jumper, Horner the other way, swish! Caden Horner has 10 for Central. She and Brewer with 22 of the Central's 38 point total, 65 38. Campbell County, front court behind the back dribble, Hutchison. Hutchison down the near side, scoops it to Woodson, returns it deep near corner. Hutchison sets, shoots a three, long miss, rebounded by Central, out of play at the end line. It'll stay with Campbell. Lady Cougars bring on Reagan Davis and Reagan Stanfield. Central brings in for the first time Anaya Ramsey as Avery Brewer checks out. Q Houston checks out. Also coming on for the Lady Bobcats is, well, we thought number 32 is Jenna Buckner. That may not be the case. Kitts with a big three for Campbell. Kitts with 21 to lead all scores. Another Dr. Jill Browning 2020 trade. 68 38. Campbell. With its largest lead of 30. Jumper by Central from three on the near wing. No good. Rebound Woodson for Campbell. 68-38. 95 seconds. Lester trots it to front court down the far side. Nearly travel with the basketball. It's a knocked away. Scooped off the floor by Kitts. Kitts in the far corner. Inside pass comes to Stanfield to a moving Lester. Driving through. Puts it up. Hits the bottom of the iron. Rebounded by Central. And Central in front court. A one-on-four break. The ball goes out of play. Last touch by Campbell, they say. It's Central's basketball. Lady Cougars bring on Abby Paul. I think that's Abby wearing jersey 11 as Carly Kitts checks out. Central with the basketball. 75 seconds to go. Down by 30. Largest difference. Central shot good. Shot is good by the Lady Bobcats. And Central pulls to within 28 at 102 to play in the ball game. Lester in front court. Lester for Campbell County to Davis. Davis drives to the left side of the lane, throws it near corner. Woodson sets for a three. Shot short. Here is Central with the basketball on the recovery. Front court, Central down the near sideline. That's Bella Marlowe in the game. Her dad, George. Her grandfather, George, played at Wynn High School. He's here tonight. Shot's no good. And Marlowe throws it back in play. And the ball goes free and a foul is called. This is tagged against Campbell County, I think. Or was that against Barnes? I thought it was against it Barnes. It is against Barnes. It is yes. Barnes. She's the only number three I see. As 
Davis tosses it in play to Lester. 35 seconds to go in the ball game. And here's Lester in front court down the far side. Hands it off to Paul. Here is Davis. Far side, Lester. Campbell perhaps holding to let the clock run out. Paul goes out of play off the hands of a central lady Bobcat. And it'll stay with Campbell. 18.8 seconds to go in the ball game. Carly Kitts tops in the game with 21. 13 of those came after halftime, almost a steal by Central. Emma Brandenburg with 17. 12 of hers came in the first half. Rebound by Marlowe for Central. 10 seconds. Front court. Here's Central. Barnes, deep far corner. Throws it on top, trying to get it to Marlowe. Marlowe didn't get there, and it goes out of play near sideline. 1.8 seconds to go. And Lester will toss it in play. Lester always has such a happy expression as she's here to toss it in play for Campbell County. Throws it in to Davis, and she'll hold it in the back court. And Campbell wins it 68 to 40. 68 to 40. Campbell wins over Central. We'll be back in a moment to visit with head coach Jason Kitts. We'll name our collectibles and more player of the game, plus all that and more here on the TCAT Cougar Wrap Up Show, set to begin now. Final score at Campbell 68, Central 40. You're following Campbell basketball on the WLAF Thrills Tire Shop Sports Network. TCAT is a cat fan. TCAT at Jacksboro loves the Cougars. Your Tennessee College of Applied Technology is the leader in technical education and industry training. TCAT makes higher education accessible to more Tennesseans. Select from a career in administrative office technology, computer information technology, cosmetology, residential, commercial, industrial electricity, machine tool technology, pharmacy technician, power sports technology, practical nursing, computer information technology, welding technology, Start on your road to success now. Connect to tcatjacksboro.edu. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423-201-9799. Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stop Lot 10 on East Central at Cumberland Avenue. Whether you're a contractor or you're just handling a project around the house or farm, CNO Metal Sales has the best prices in the tri-state. Metal roofing custom cuts as well as delivery are available from CNO Metal. Be sure and ask us about our lifetime warranty on metal. Matt Klein can handle your big or small jobs from one piece of metal to a hundred. Select from 22 colors. CNO Metal Sales is right behind O'Reilly's Auto Parts in Middlesboro. Just take a lift at the first stoplight and CNL is on the right. See or call Matt at 606-248-5 this is Matthew Klein, former Cougar number 42. Come see me at CNL Metal. It's Campbell winning 68 to 40 over Central here on Brown Court. With us is head coach Jason Kitts. Coach, you played a good team tonight, but I think you got out to such a, a, a rocket start that maybe kind of changed the complexion of the game for Central real fast. Yeah, like I said, we've changed up a few things. They're like a rock, locker room routine, just little details type stuff that we're trying to change just to try to get our girls uh, bring in the energy early. Uh, like I said, locker room was off the charts before, you know, before the game. Uh, like I said, we talked about last night, if we could get that extra score and double figures, I think that's a separate because usually we're having two or three right there at it. Uh, and when somebody else averages a couple more points, it gets you going a little bit. And like I said tonight, I think everybody played well. Even at times, there was a little run there right before. Uh, we, we was in foul trouble a little bit, so we subbed a lot. Uh, and like I said, it was, I hate subbing four or five at one time, and we did. And uh, they made a little run. But uh, most of their points come off of free throws and they hit a couple threes, but in transition. Uh, like I said, I thought all in all we did pretty well tonight. Let's see, 10 points from Bella Lester, a yep. dozen from Sailor Hutchison, plus several assists. Yep. 21 from Carly Kitts, 17 from Emma Brandenburg. I thought Brandenburg and Kitts really kind of lit the fire for you tonight early. Yeah, and Def, you know, Emma is one of those kind of players, like I said, everybody rallies around her. She's that. She's the. She's not the captain, but she, she's 
spiritually, I guess, uh, <laughs> kind of circles everybody around. And uh -huh. and when she gets going and she brings energy, uh, it's it's it can be good. it's really good for us. And I told her before the game, I said, you know, I want the player that I saw in the the, the, the volunteer times that had posted some pictures. And I said, the look on your face last night, you were mad, you were angry. And I said, I want to see that tonight from the start, not in the second half. And uh, she did that. And then, like I said, we kept telling her for the game, we're going to feed you the ball, finish it. And she did. And like I said, I'm happy for her playing good ball right now. She's playing really good ball. I think she made her first six shots. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. With no dribble. With no dribble. Yeah, Just catch with, and with, with the left hand a yeah. lot on the left side of the bucket. Uh, of course, Carly Kitts, what can you say? 21 points tonight, four of those beyond the arc. Yeah. Uh, she, like I said, she shot the ball well. And uh, one thing about Carly, you know, every night her, she may not shoot the ball, but she's there defensively. She gets deflection. She's, she makes the right pass. Uh, you know, being a, being my daughter, obviously I'm going to be, a, you know, I don't give her a lot of credit, but uh, she can shoot the ball. Like I said, we're just trying to get her open. And uh, if she's not 100% open, she's not going to shoot it. But tonight we kept finding her, kept skipping. And like I said, we went on a run. Sailor hit a couple threes. Bella hit a couple big ones there toward late. So, uh, like I said, we, we got it done. Ten points from Bella Lester. All those came in the second half, including two threes. Yeah, and Bella. That's the thing about Bella. She she can. She's so streaky. If she hits one, she's probably going to hit another. And we know that. And we try to find her. Uh, but I still think her best basketball is getting to the rim. She likes physical. She likes being physical. Uh, and she's better when she attacks and goes off two feet and scores. It's hard for her for anybody to guard her because she's so quick and athletic. Uh, sometimes she settles for the three a little bit, but. Uh, all in all, you take that with her a little bit because, like I said, she plays so hard. Every possession, she plays so hard. Sailor Hutchison with a good assist to turnover ratio tonight. She has 12 points for you, six in each half. Actually, uh, five in the second half, seven in the first half. Yeah, she played well, too. Like I said, getting her going left, if she gets downhill, if she's hard to guard going downhill. If she mm -hmm. goes straight in, uh, she scores. But if she does that, turns her body a little bit, trying to draw the, or avoid the foul, uh, she misses a shot, and we kept telling her all, all week, you know, go toward the rim, attack the rack, you know, get your shoulders square and finish it. And Emma's on the back side, so uh, she did that tonight. And uh, like I said, she attacks, she attacks the left side really, really well. Campbell wins tonight by a final of 68 to 40. If you have your choice of wins, certainly you want this win tonight over last night's win simply because this is a district game. But Definitely. Powell lies ahead on Friday night, and we talked about – Every game is critical in the district. So few teams in the district these days. Definitely, and, and right now, us Powell, like I think uh, I want to think Central actually had Powell almost. I think they did beat Powell actually. I have to go back and check, but um, Powell's pretty good. I mean, they they, they play a little bit of a zone, uh, kind of like a one one three zone a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna work on that some tomorrow, and then uh, or Thursday. I'm sorry, and then. Uh, like I said, we're hoping to go over and get a win. That's a big one over there. If you can go up three to one, and and then uh, Oak Ridge on Tuesday, and then Carnes here on Friday, so we've got a chance to. And we talked about it. You know, our, our attitude in the locker room is our goal is still achievable. You know, we still want we still want to be one or two in the top, you know top two in the district. And I think you know right now we're still set up for that. So, uh, but it happens. It started tonight, and then it starts again th uh, Friday. So we're excited. We're ready to go, Coach. We'll be ready to go too. I'm excited. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. See you Friday. Thank, Thank you, you, Coach. Thank Coach you. Jason Kitts and his Campbell Lady Cougars winning 68-40 to over the Central Lady Bobcats. Individually in this basketball game, Central led by Avery Brewer, a freshman, with a dozen points. Eight of those at the free throw line. She was 8 for 8 tonight. Ten points from Cadence Horner. And she had six points, changed that eight points in the second half for the Central Bobcats. Q Houston with five tonight. Four points from Addison Brewer, uh, a three and a free throw. Also for the Lady Bobcats, it's Scout Horner with five, including a big three. For Campbell counting in the game, Carly Kitts with four threes, 21 points. And Emma Brandenburg with a big night of 17 points for Campbell County. A dozen from Sailor Hutchison, 10 from Bella Lester. Also for Campbell, Destiny Rutherford with five, including a big three. Another big three from Reagan Stanfield tonight. And Elia Woodson played for Campbell and did not score, as did Reagan Davis and Andy Paul, the final 68-40. to 40. Back in a moment, we'll name our collectibles and more player of the game here on the TCAT Cougar Wrap-Up Show as we continue from John Brown Gym on the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. You work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. 
There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. BP is back. Rice Oil has brought back BP to Big O's Get and Go and Cumberland Crossing BP. BP provides the energy that keeps Campbell County and America moving and helps drive the U.S. economy. Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco. From Rice Oil, La Follette. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in the surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing. 423-566-6561. Tenova Medical Group is making it easier to see a primary care provider in the La Follette area quickly. Schedule an appointment online anytime at tenovalafollettepcp.com. Citizens Bank is a locally owned and operated bank serving communities in East Tennessee. The bank was established in 1934 with three guiding principles at its foundation. Assurance of safety to depositors, a high standard of service to customers, and a genuine desire to serve the community. These principles are the core factor in the success that has lasted over 85 years and grown Citizens Bank to the renowned financial institution it is today. To learn more about Citizens Bank, visit CitizensBank24.com. Hello Cougar fans, I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. Gray Insurance is your local independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. There's warming up down to our right, to our left, the Central Bobcats set to play the final game of the night tonight. Central won the JV game. Lady Cougars won the girls' varsity game. And here is the Cougars and Bobcats in the night camp and the boys' game. And uh, Coach Don Atherton is here. Uh, are we going to give one player the collectibles and more player of the game honor, or is this going to be split between hands? What What have you decided? I, I, well, I think uh, Brandon... Uh, <laughs> Brandon Burke should have the first half. Okay. She have 12 points, and I think Cody Kitts uh, ignited him in the second half as well. Those, those, three, those threes, you know, she just kind of uh -huh. like uh, put it away. She put it away. Kitts with 21, 13 in the second half. Brandon Berg with, a, with 17, a dozen in the first half. Our players of the game from Collectibles of More, Emma Brandenburg and Carly Kitts. Back in a moment, the start of Campbell in Central on the WLAF Dolls Tire Shop Sports Network. Terry's Pharmacy delivers. Whether it's at their drive throughs at the curbside, or at your doorstep, Terry's is county-wide. Don't want to get out of the house? Terry's will safely deliver to your door. Anxious about your pharmacy not having a drive through Terry's will seamlessly help you transfer your prescriptions so you can drive through at one of Terry's convenient locations, La Follette and Jacksboro. At the drive throughs drop off your prescription and wait in the parking lot for your phone call when it's ready. Have a question? Want to transfer your prescription? Just call Terry's, 423-562. 4928 562 4928. No matter where you are in Campbell County, you're liable to see us on deliveries. Just honk and wave. At United Cumberland Bank, our number one focus is people. You see, our employees are our largest shareholders, and they are dedicated to ensure your financial success. And one of the biggest financial decisions you can make is a home loan, and we will help every step of the way. Buying a home is a huge decision, so is choosing the right lender. Find out more at unitedcumberland.com. United Cumberland Bank. Generations of trust. Neighbors you know. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. All loans subject to credit approval. Quality and Clayton go hand in hand. That's quality constructed homes from Clayton Homes. The staff at Clayton Homes, located right here at home in Campbell County at Jacksboro, is ready to help you through all the steps of home ownership. From selecting the home that's just right for you to putting the keys in your hand. Since 1950, 
1956, Clayton Homes has been making dreams come true. See the home folks about your new dream home from Clayton Homes, 110 North Street near Jacksboro Middle School. Call or just come on by. The folks at Hensley Tire and Service welcome. Campbell, coached by Ernie Clawson, assisted by Brandon Clawson. Joe Ward is the head coach of the Central Bobcats, assisted by Bruce Simpson. Central comes in 99, 0-2 in the district. Campbell, 8-6, 0-2 in the district, putting a little more emph emphasis on the game tonight because of that for both teams. Kind of a must win for Campbell, you have to figure, since they're at home as both teams head back to their respective benches. We're awaiting the announcement of the starting lineups from public address announcer Patrick Peebley momentarily. As Campbell County hosting on a Tuesday night, the Central Bobcats, Campbell winning a double overtime last night over Oneida, 78-76, and then will be on the road at Powell on Friday for a district game with the Powell Panthers. And our public address announcer, Patrick Peebley. And maybe we're not ready just yet. Campbell in all white, orange numerals, trimmed in blue with Campbell County. The number between Campbell County on the fronts of the jersey, central with central in red and white trim across the tops of the numbers on the fronts of the jerseys, black jerseys and trunks for the Central Bobcats. From Central High School on Jacksboro Pike in North Knoxville. As there's the buzzer, and I think we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event of the evening. As your Cougars of Campbell County take on the visiting Bobcats of Central, your starting lineups, first for the Bobcats, number one, Mighty Troy. Number two, J.D. Harris. Number 10, Trey Robinson. Number 23, Dante Strickland. And number 34, Joshua Brown. And now your Cougars of Campbell County, number two, Devin Jones. Number five, David Atkins. Number 11, Adama Sanogo. Number 12, Gavin Cox. And number 55, John Long. The Cougars and the Bobcats set to play. Campbell coached by Ernie Clawson. Joe Ward is the head coach of the Central Bobcats. Had a chance to visit with the coach before the game a little bit. Of course, his playing days were at the University of Georgia. He transferred there from Clemson, played on Hugh Durham's Final Four team back in 1986 and spent time in the NBA with the Phoenix Suns. And uh, he said, I'm not quite what I was. He said, I was 6'6", 215 in my playing days. He said, I'm about 6'6", uh, more than that now. And a hello to Miss Stacy Ward back at home watching her husband's team, the Central Bobcats. Tip controlled by Campbell, finally by Cox. To Sonogo, stolen by Central. Central, deflected by John Long, saved by Jones. Front court Jones, bounce pass ahead of Sonogo. Puts it up, shot is blocked, foul is called. Adama draws the foul. So here a push on J.D. Harris. That's his first. Adama Sonogo, 14 seconds into the game at the free throw line. The collectibles are more free throw line for Two shots from the shooting violation. Toss, Sonogo pops in, pops out. Looked like he had a real nice touch on it, but it just didn't stay soft enough within the cylinder. His second try here, 7.46 to play, opening quarter. Spins the basketball, one dribble, flexes the knees, launches the shot. It is good. So the collectibles and more free throw is made good by Adama Sonogo. We're going to need to get uh, Coach connected here. Basket to our left. Campbell appears to be zoning. On top of the basketball, this is Harris. Harris and Troy. 
Now with the basketball, Strickland posting high for Central is Brown. Tosses it to Harris. Now left side of the key for three. This is in out. No good. A reaching rebound taken by John Long for Campbell. The miss by Strickland. Long with the recovery. Campbell ahead, 1-0. 7-13 to play opening quarter. Basket to our right. Shot misses. Rebound to Nogo. Puts it back up after a fake. Rims away. Here is the miss and the recovery by Central. Pulling it down strong is Josh Hua Brown. Central in front court. Troy with the basketball. Shuffles it near side. Strickland. Now exchanging with Troy. Deep near corner. Up top for we're the central ball. We're starting out in a 3 2 zone here. Yes. Basket to our left central operates. The Bobcats working the ball near side. Here's a try for three by Robinson. It's good. It's a three. That is Trey Robinson with his first points, and Central jumps on top, three to nothing over Campbell. Central's top scorer not starting tonight. Chris Bozeman averaging upwards of 20 points per game. We'll see action, but he's not getting the start. Inside jumper, good by Devin Jones. What a spinning move by Jones. Lays it up softly from in front with the left hand. It's Campbell tying the game at three. Basket to our left, Central, 6-10 to go first quarter. Long in the center of that 3-2 up top. Jumper is no good by Central. David Atkins yanks away the rebound for Campbell. To Jones in front court. Jones for Campbell. Drives all the way through. Lays it up. Out of control a bit and it's missed. Rebound by Central. That is Brown with the ball. Front court. Central. Harris. Left side. Jumper for three. A long miss. Adama Sonogo with the rebound. Clears up the far side to Jones. Who leads it up for the orange and blue. Central straight up man to man. Right there for Central is Strickland working on Jones, and a foul is called. Jones gets bumped to the floor, up and okay. This foul is on Dante Strickland, and this for Central, the second foul on the Bobcats. And you're going to see a lot of pressure on, on Devin tonight as well. You know, he, he's a, they're going to pressure him real good. Well, he has that uh, big target on his back. Lead pass for Atkins. Didn't think it was for him. Goes out of play at the end line, turns right back to Central. Gavin should put a little more air underneath that. 5.33 to play. First quarter, Central with the basketball. Campbell stays in that 3-2 zone. The bottom two defenders, Sonogo far side, near side, Gavin Cox. Bounce pass goes out of play on the near sideline, trying to get it to Trey Robinson. And a Robinson with a three a moment ago could not get possession. 3-3 game, Long tosses it in play to Jones, who will be trapped in backcourt. I have two defenders meet him in backcourt. Here's Long, look away pass, far side. Cox for a three. Shot short, tipped out by Long. Back to Cox, near side, Atkins sets. Right wing three, but number five is a long miss. Ball tapped out hard. Sonogo and Long hit the deck, up and okay. Front court, it comes to Harris. Harris cannot get the shot to go, and a foul is called in Campbell County. This against the orange and white. is tagged on Devin Jones, his first. Team foul, one on Campbell, or is that two? That is the second team foul on Campbell. Thought we had two fouls for Central. Apparently not. Free throw shot is short by Dante Strickland. He's there for another. In a 3-3 game, we played two minutes and 55 seconds. Basket to our left. The free stripe. Toss is missing off the back of the iron. Jones chases it down. Trap the backcourt, throws it away. Defender steps in front of Cox, hands it off to his fellow player, but it's stolen by Campbell. Front court, Campbell. Adama Sonogo, near side pass, Atkins. One dribble, forces up a shot. Can't get it to go. No foul called. Front court, three on none break for Central. Driving left side, left hand layup. Good by Dante Strickland. And Strickland has two. As Campbell County is down five to three. Three quarter court press. Jones throws to Sonogo in front court. Will throw it now to the far side to Cox. Threw it away. Campbell County with some unforced errors. Central ahead 5-3, 425 first quarter. This is Troy, throws it near side. Harris drives the baseline left, throws it back out to Troy near the center court line. Pass guitar left for Central. Campbell stays in that 3-2 matchup. Up top, Troy has it tipped almost by Campbell. Inside pass comes to Brown. Brown to Troy, deep far corner. This is Robinson, long miss, tapped out, saved by Cox for Campbell. Ahead for Atkins, it's stolen by Central. Atkins couldn't get to it. Right side pass, Troy tries to tray, missing rebound, Campbell County's Jones after touch the hands of Atkins and Cox, 
and a foul is whistled on the Central Bobcats. This is tagged on number 23, that being Dante Strickland, and officially two on Strickland, two on Central. 5-3, Central ahead of Campbell. Down to our left, John Long, in front of the Cougar Crazies in the backcourt sideline, will toss it in play to Devin Jones. 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. Jones and Long exchanging backcourt. Now Jones will bring it across the stripe, far side, on a dribble, as Lester has it thrown, taken away from right in front of him, driving the other way. Central is good. This is Robinson, who has five. Central has his largest lead at seven to five. Will Lester is in for Campbell. As Sonogo came out, Coach Ernie Clawson wants a timeout and a pause. 3.29 to play. We're in the first quarter at Brown Court. Campbell seven, change that Central seven, Campbell three. And Campbell, Don Atherton, played from behind all night last night until we made it to the overtime. And you were in similar fashion here tonight, yeah. trailing seven, three early. Well, <laughs> officially and unofficially, I have six turnovers already for us. So the, I, I think uh, a lot of those on those passes, Jim, are bounce passes. Okay, again, the bounce pass is the slowest pass in basketball, and an open court bounce pass is going to get intercepted. And I think they intercepted three of them so far. Well, with seven points and six turnovers, uh, shame on Central. Yes, <laughs> they, they, we, could be, we should be down by ten. 3.29 to play, opening half, 7-3. Central ahead of Campbell down to our left at the baseline on the far side of the glass. John Long will toss it in play. Full court pressure, Central. Pass comes in to Devin Jones. Jones and Long still in backcourt along with Adkins. Front court, it's Cox and Lester. Front court pass comes to Cox. Throws it across the lane to Lester. Fakes, shoots, misses, rebound, follow. Good! All in one motion. Gavin Cox with the play for Campbell. Breaks the ice. It's been a while since the Cougars have put up points. 7-5 Central with the ball in the lead. Between the circles, it's Troy. Finding in the deep far corner, Robinson into Brown. Brown can't do anything with it. It's Troy on top, deep left corner. This is a jumper by Central, good. This is Chris Bozeman, the team's leading scorer who came in during the break. Buries the trade. Central has doubled up Campbell, 10 to five, 248 to play first quarter. Jones in front court, a blocking foul called on Robinson who was moving with Jones up the far boundary near the central bench. Jim, we need to get the ball in the middle of the floor to break this press effectively. Front court, the pass comes in to Will Lester between the circles. Those at far side, Cox. Cox inside John Long. John fakes, shoots, scores. John Long, left side, right hand. Long with the big night last night, 19 points and 15 boards. His team now down by three. 10-7, inside pass, Robinson blocked by, whoa, a jump basketball is called as it is John Long blocking the shot of Trey Robinson that perhaps could have gone easier on a foul. So Campbell catching a break on the jump ball alternate possession at Central's ball. Nice play, John Long. Bounce pass, Brown knocks down Gavin Cox. Not sure if Cox, uh, if that was... Uh, it's a little, All the play, maybe a little Hollywood here. Yeah, a little Hollywood, but that, that's, a, that's our first charge now, Jim. We, we need to have five of them. So there's the first. Here's the inbounds against pressure. Campbell has it. Long, John Long, backcourt, finds Jones. Throws front, pa front court to Atkins. Almost a throwaway, saved by Will Lester. John Long, near side, flicks it out to Atkins. Atkins will fade, shoots, 14-footer, no good. Central with the rebound. Clearing away is Joshua Brown, 10-7 Central with the lead in the ball, just under two minutes to play. Here goes Harris, throws it to a trailing Bozeman deep near corner, knocked one for three down there just a moment ago. Continues the dribble, finds Troy between the circles. Campbell is still zoning. Inside pass goes to Brown, tipped away, saved by Central, far side with the save as Harris, hands it off to his point guard. Mighty, M-I-D-I, Troy is his name. Cross-court pass, Bozeman. Left side of the circle, inside pass comes to Harris down the left side of the lane, deep near corner, Brown for a three. Nice soft touch for the big man. Josh Brown with three, and Central pushes its lead out to six, its largest advantage. At plus six, coming at 13 to seven. 112 to play, first quarter. Skip pass, Cox, Atkins, touch pass, deep far side, Lester bounces it back to Atkins, drive, throws it on top to Long, Long, free throw line jumper, yes! John Long takes it to the bank, the hard side bank. A Campbell big play. John Long with four. And that extra pass helped. 
13-9. Central ahead of Campbell with the basketball. Under a minute to play, first quarter. Far side, Troy. Long, long right wing three. It's an air ball. Jones there to take it off the bounce off the floor. Jones, right hands the dribble to front court down the right side, driving all the way through, left hand layup, good, and a blocking foul is called on Robinson. Change that Bozeman. Big play, Devin Jones for Campbell. Jones, second bucket, he has four chance at five with the collectibles of more free throw line. Chris Bozeman picks up his first foul. So Central brings out Robinson, and uh, Campbell County brings on Sonogo. Along with Gavin Owens. Owens with a big game last night. Cox and Long getting a breather. Left hand free throw. Good. The collective more free throw line by Jones. Jones with 29 last night. Has five. One point game. Campbell trails Central 13 to 12. 34 seconds to play in this first quarter of action. As Strickland comes back in for Central during that break. Deep far corner Bozeman. Flicks the pass to Strickland. To Troy, deep near corner, Harris quickly the double team there. High pass, out of play, far sideline. Central with a turnover. Campbell will take the ball back. Down by one. A chance here to get its second lead of the night. Campbell led one to nothing on a, an Adama Sonogo free throw. That was a good trap right there in that corner for that for the force that turnover. Paid a divot in there, didn't it? Yes, it did. 16 seconds. Jones in backcourt. He and Sonogo, Lester, Owens. Adkins make up the Cougar five. Jones in front court, eight seconds. Now the far chance. side. Devin take the five last seconds. shot. Left side, three. Air ball partially blocked. It goes out of play at the end line. It's Central's basketball. 1.8 seconds remaining. So I think the Jones shot must have gotten a fingertip because it was an air ball. Rare miss. Long shot for Central. Counts if it goes. It misses. We played one. Central in front, 13-12 at the end of the first quarter. Campbell basketball coming up again. Continues here on the WLAF Thules Tire Shop Sports Network. The folks at Hensley Tire and Service welcome you by their new location at the corner of Beach and Indiana Avenue in La Follette. Hensley's Tire and Service provides road service going to customers stuck on the highway somewhere with tire or engine trouble. Servicing tractor trailer trucks is another service offered along with mechanical work, alignment, and lifts. 423-563-TIRE. That's 563-8473. Central leads Campbell after one quarter of play. In the game, Trey Robinson has five to lead Central. Three points each from Chris Bozeman and Josh Brown. Central with three threes in the first quarter. Two points from Dante Strickland. Campbell with five from Devin Jones. Four from John Long. A point from Adama Sonogo. And two from Gavin Cox on the putback all-in-one motion for Cox. Makes it a 13-12 game. Campbell trails Central. So you met Jerry Cox, Luke Browning's grandfather the other day, Yes, huh? yes, really nice man, really nice man, I tell you. He's very knowledgeable of the game as well. I, I guess he coached uh, <coughs> girls, AEU girls and stuff. And well, of course, his daughter is the legend, Dr. Jill Cox Browning, yes. so there you go. It is Owens to toss it and play. Did he have a game last night? How about that? Midcourt, near side, into Jones. Campbell has Jones bring it across the stripe. Picked up by Harris in the man-to-man. -man. Works off the long pick. Continues down the far side. Hook pass returns. Adama Sonogo, top of the key. Inside pass, John Long. Baby hook off the mark. Here is the rebound by Central. New man in the game. That is Keith Perez. Front court. Central. Basket to our left. Deep near corner. A three is on the way. It's missing. It is a tip up. No good. Here is a putback by Bozeman, and it crawls away. No good. Back up, and the shot is good. And Central gets the bucket to go. It counts. Foul on Campbell. This is tagged on Adama Sonogo. That's the first on Sonogo at the line. Keith Perez, his first two. Has Coach Ward how many players he's going to play. He said hopefully everybody. Free throw missed. Rebound John Long. Two-hand high reaching rebound for number 55. The orange, white, and blue. 15-12 Central maintains the edge. We approach the seven-minute mark of the first half. Jones, it goes off a sneaker out of play. They say it was off the toe of Devin Jones. So it's almost like a little punt that goes out of play at the far end line down to our right, and that's where Central puts it in play. They had 15 to 12. In the game for Campbell is Elijah McKinney. It was Elijah McKinney with that last foul, not Sonogo. Front court, Campbell, McKinney, Long, Owens atop the three in that 3-2 zone down on the blocks. 
Far side Jones, near side Sonogo. Central exchanging out high, posting high for Central is Harris. Harris camping out in the lane, takes the pass, throws it near side. A three on the way by Bozeman, good! Bozeman's a gunner, he has six, both beyond the arc, both same spot, deep left corner. Basket to our left, 18-12 Central, matching its largest lead. Deep far corner, Elijah McKinney with a shot for three, it's no good, Say back in by John Long. And now it is Elijah McKinney roughed up by Mighty Troy. The foul is on the books against number one, Mighty Troy for the Central Bobcats. And Campbell in the bonus now. We, we need to be aware of where Bozeman is on the floor. He, he's a three-point shooter. <clears throat> he's their main gun, so we need to keep an eye on him. At the collectibles, more free throw line, Elijah McKinney for one. If he makes it, a bonus, a second toss. Given the fact that Bozeman scores upwards of 20 points per game, I would say just maybe wherever the ball is, is where you're going to find Bozeman. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's Probably a nose, so. for, nose right. for the ball. Elijah McKinney toss. He'll get a bonus at the collectibles more free throw line. Elijah McKinney for Campbell. Pulls the Cougars to within five at 18 13. Uh, Bozeman in Coach Joe Ward's doghouse. Uh, didn't get the start tonight, but he's uh, certainly more than made up for that as he did get back into the to the game. Not starting, though. Second free throw to collect him for free throw line. Good by Elijah McKinney. And Central has an 18-14 edge over the Campbell Cougars. Front court, basket to our left. Central with the basketball. The new end of the game is Xavier and Gibby. Gibby number five. This is Harris. Hands it back to Gibby, deep far corner. Now long, long three by Bozeman. It's good. What was that, maybe 25, 24, 25 feet on that one? Far side, right side of the Pretty key. Pretty close. Yeah, 21-14. Bozeman lighting it up with nine all beyond the arc. Front court interception. This is pulled away by Perez. Front court off the dribble pass. Goes out of play far sideline. Cannot connect with Gibby on the off the dribble pass. Campbell gets it right back down by seven. Central with its largest advantage, 21-14. to 14. And for Central, one, two, three, four, five. Five threes tonight, so 15 of Central's points have come beyond the arc. Sonogo in front court against pressure. Near side, Atkins tries to tray. It is a long miss. Put back by Cox. Nice touch. Wow, what timing, what touch by Cox on the putback. His second of the night, he has four. Front court, Campbell down by five. Central with the ball. Here's Bozeman driving the baseline. Throws it back out. Right side, Gibby of the key. Shot no good. Tapped out long. Saved by Perez. Tip by Campbell. Stolen by Atkins. Campbell with active hands. And Atkins coming off maybe his best game of the season last night. Front court, driving all the way through. Lays it up left hand, left side. No good. Tipped out. Sonogo, and it goes off central out of play. And then Sater front court. This is Central Strickland driving, shooting, scoring on the left side. As a quick change of events there. Strickland with four. Central back by six now. Change that seven. 23-16. 5.04 to play in the first half. We need to run something here. Get it down low. Campbell County's Jones driving through. Shot is no good. He's hammered on his way to the bucket. And will shoot two free throws as a result. This is on Keith Perez, his first. Team foul eight. One plus one for Devin Jones. Change that shooting violation. Two shots for Devin Jones at the collectibles and more free throw stripe. Jones, one dribble. Tosses it up. Back iron miss. So we Jones. Need, we need to start making that extra pass offensively, Jim, to, to get openings here. We uh, talked about that, that that happened once earlier in the, this yes. game. They need to get down low to John, John and Adamo, because those, those guys can't guard him. Jones' second free throw is good. He has six tonight as he is two for three. Driving layup. This is Bozeman for Central. Bozeman has 11. His first two-pointer. Basket to our right, Campbell operates down by eight. Now Central stretching that lead out to its largest. Front court, Campbell, Jones picked up by Strickland. Jones drives through, shot no good, gets his own miss, back up, it won't go, tapped out, safe, Central has it. Central ahead to Bozeman, will drive, will duck it. Bozeman with 13, and Campbell wants a timeout. 27-17, Central by 10 now. 4.15 to play until halftime. A pause for us on the WLA of Thule's Tire Shop Sports Network. 
First National Bank, we put you first with local lending and local decisions. Our First National Bank lenders are a part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FNB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Steelers! 27-17, Central in front of Campbell on Brown Court. Chris Bozeman off the bench with 13 points, three threes, a two-point lay-in, and a dunk. To make it a 10-point game here, Don Atherton, 27-17, 4-15 remaining first hand. And, and what they're doing, Jim, if you notice, as soon as we're shooting, Bozeman's releasing. Well, he was wide open yeah, uh, that one time. But every, yeah. every shot, he's not hitting the boards at all. And he's he's floating out this way as soon as, as, soon as we shoot. Well, you asked where is he going to be, and I said where the ball, where the ball is. is. <laughs> yeah. Baseline backcourt, Long tosses it into Jones. It's Long, Jones, Cox, Sonogo, Atkins for Campbell. For Coach Joe Ward, it's Perez, Strickland, Bozeman, Harris, and Gibby. Inside pass, John Long. Long jumps, shoots, he's fouled. Long fouled, and we'll go to the line. The, the collector was a more free throw. This is on Strickland, his third unofficially. And we need to continue to get it to John Davin or, or Dom on the knees. They, they do not have the size to, to guard those kids. John well, Long. 15 is pretty big. Perez the, is, Perez, yes. he's, he's a nice size. John Long at the collective was more free throw line with a rare miss. Has a second. He has four points on the evening. 27-17. Second toss. It's trickling away. Tapped out. Saved by Long for Campbell. Into Cox. Cox across the lane to Adama. Good. <laughs> Adama Sonogo has three. What teamwork. Long. Cox. Now Sonogo to finish. 27-19. And it's they, Central wanting a timeout. They went from a three-foot shot to a two-foot shot to a one-foot shot. <laughs> And it went in. And it went in. So 3.47 to play. It's almost too much passing, but uh, it worked out. So Campbell County and John Long with the rare couple of misses there at the collectibles and more free throw stripe. We'll be on with the broadcast Friday from Powell. Shade before 6 o'clock as Campbell takes on the Powell Panthers. And let's see what we have scheduled that night with regard to our JV game. The JV contest will be the Cougars again. So Cougar JV is on Friday. Falling tonight in a tough one. JV boys Friday night? Yes. Mm -hmm. With Powell, followed by the Lady Cougars, and then we'll have the Cougars and the Panthers in the nightcap. Campbell County had not beaten Powell in a long time. That started a couple of years ago with Campbell coming away and winning. We, we beat them last year twice. Well, uh, yes. Started, that, was e that was easy. But that trend started the, the season before. Oh, it did? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. All right. Uh, uh, Campbell beat Powell that season for the first time in, in quite a while. Oh, really? Okay. Front court, it's central with the basketball. Ahead by eight. Driving shot is blocked. The player control foul is called. Sonogo there. There's the second one for you. Yep. And this is against Harris, his second foul unofficially. So down to our left, John Long with toss it to play on the far side of the glass against pressure. And it comes to Devin Jones. Jones, Sonogo, Long, Atkins, Cox, the five for Coach Ernie Clawson. Front court, this is David Atkins. Atkins works off the Sonogo pick, stops his dribble near side, bounces to a moving John Long. Look away pass Jones, driving. Inside pass Sonogo, powers it up, scored! Adama Sonogo takes that one to the bank, the hard side bank, a Campbell County big play. Front court, deep far corner. Campbell down by six, almost a travel, oh, and it is. Yeah. Boy, that was a late whistle. <laughs> Extra steps by J.D. Harris. And, uh, I think that referee heard you, Jim. <laughs> he, he may have. I do talk rather loudly sometimes. 27-21, Central. And now for Central, a new face comes on. This is Efren Rodriguez, a junior, number 20. He played the JV game. Well, I think there are probably three players, D.J. Smith, Efren, and uh, Parker Hampton that uh, played in the JV game that we may see here tonight in the varsity game. Coach Ward said he wanted to get, get some of those youngsters in. Reverse layup, John Long. Yes. Pass. How pass. nice is that? Devin Jones, John Long with six. How about that, Pops? Pops Crutchfield tuned in tonight. He has a special connection, the grandfather of John Long, 27-23. Long with six. 
He had 19 and 15 last night, double-double for number 55. Central with a four-point lead. It was once 10 just a minute ago, 27-17. Here is Rodriguez with the basketball. Stops his dribble at the free throw line. Finds the trailing Bozeman. Let's it go. Free throw line jumper. No good. Tip the round. Saved Atkins for Campbell. Atkins running. One on two break. Atkins driving. Shooting. Missing. Rebounded by Sonogo. Back up. Yes! He's fouled. Sonogo shouts as the whistle sounds. The bucket counts. The foul is tagged on Chris Bozeman. Unofficially his second. And Sonogo at the free throw line for collectibles and more. His team down by two. Seven tonight for Adama Sonogo. Six for Jones. Six for Long. Also for Campbell, four for Cox, two for McKinney. At the line, Adama Sonogo swishes this one through. He has eight. This one at the collective was a more free throw stripe. It's a one-point gap. Campbell on a 9-0 run here, 27-26. So Central brings out Perez. And the inbounder down to our right is Bozeman, along with Gibby. Just now checking in is D.J. Smith. He, too, played in the JV game. Brown is back in the game for Coach Joe Ward. Front court, here's Brown. Block left, shots no good. Foul is called a push on Gavin Cox. And as mentioned, to Rodriguez remains in the game for Central. To the line is Josh Brown. It's a good size to this young man, number 34, the black, red, and white. The 15-foot street free stripe, his team ahead by one. Campbell led one nothing. Free throw is short, he short-armed that one. So Brown with a big three tonight from this deep near corner is at the free stripe. His team ahead 27-26. Spins the ball, flexes the knees, launches the shot. It's going to roll in. So Brown has four. Campbell down by two. Can Tyree take the lead this trip? Full court pressure. Central. Evan Jones trying to shake Rodriguez and does. Brings him to the front court. Now a hold is called. Rodriguez a little too much body on Devin Jones. And the whistle sounds, the foul is tagged on Efren Rodriguez. His first. Team foul 10, the double bonus now for Campbell. 28-26 Central. So Campbell on a 9-0 run. Central with a free throw to stop that. Devin Jones, 29 points last night. This free throw rattles around and falls away. Thought he had enough shooters touch to let it. <laughs> Get that uh, roll, huh? Yeah, hang on that front lip and fall back in. It did not. So Devin Jones. Try to make it a one-point game again. Spins the ball, launches the shot, counted from the collectibles, more free throws strike. Devin Jones with seven. He's trailing Sonogo for high point honors. Sonogo with eight. Here's Bozeman, puts it up from the front, good. Bozeman, a scoring machine with 15 off the bench. Has half of Central's points, 30 to 27. Steal by Central after Atkins had restolen it. Here's Bozeman driving through across the lane past Rodriguez, lays it up, back iron miss, tip, tape, save, Campbell County. It's Cox ahead to Atkins. Atkins for Campbell. Atkins on the left side, driving, shooting, missing. Sonogo tips the rebound to himself, puts it back up. Count it. Adama Sonogo with 10 for Campbell, 30 to 29. Central clinging to a one-point edge. Front court, 115 to play. First half, Bozeman shot good off the glass, out of control, maybe a little off balance more so. He has 17, that's about his average. 32 to 29, Campbell down by three. Jones fires to front court to Long. Long for Campbell, 15 footer is off the iron, back up and no good by Cox. Here's Central to clear with Josh Brown with the rebound. Front court, Bozeman for Central. His team ahead by three, under a minute to play. Bozeman left side of the key for three, he is rimming away. Rebound at Amasonogo, Campbell County. You still need to go out and guard him right there. That's uh, maybe his first miss, 32 to 29. Campbell can tie to finish the half, perhaps. Here's Jones. Jones for Campbell down the foot, little floater, no good. Rebound out of play at the end line. Team rebound, Campbell, as it goes off central, 32 to 29. 28 and a half seconds to play, second quarter at Campbell High. Both coaches, Joe Ward across to our right, Ernie Clawson across to our left, up, shouting instructions. Jones to toss it in play, bounces it to Sonogo, can't hang on to it, saves it to Cox. 25 seconds to Atkins. Atkins for Campbell, drives, runs, jumps, shoots, uh, throws. Travel is called. Was that on Atkins they call the travel? Or Sonogo? I think it must have been Adama. He's kind of questioning that. 32 to 29, 19.2 seconds remaining. Gibby to toss it and play far side, right next to Coach Joe Ward in front of the central bench. 
Central's Bozeman will walk it across the blue midcourt stripe with a left-hand dribble. As he's in friendly territory now, basket to our left, 10 seconds. Bozeman picked up by Jones in the man-to-man. Bozeman, five seconds, will take him to the paint. Fades, shoots, scores, he falls down. There's the horn, Central leads 34-29 at intermission. For Bozeman, 19 first half points. Back in a moment as we tell you that it is Central ahead of Campbell. 34-29, it's halftime on the WLAF Thules Tire Shop Sports Network. Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage, nursery. Shh. Sorry, Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal, and it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com, or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Campbell County Dance Team. The Follett Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. This is former Lady Cougar, Dr. Jill Cox Browning. If you can't see the scoreboard, come on down and see me in the Walmart Vision Center. Better Vision begins with a phone call to former Lady Cougar, Dr. Jill Browning, 423-566-5850. I can see the scoreboard. I can see the scoreboard. See Dr. Jill Browning inside the Walmart Eye Center, open Monday through Thursday. Appointments are available. Hi. 
Hi, this is Kimberly Burge here at Burge Screen Printing. We work to bring your idea to reality. We specialize in custom screen printing, direct-to-garment full-color printing for all your apparel needs. We also do full-color printing on signs, banners, and much more. Hey, this is Larry Burge. Stop by and see us today in downtown La Follette at 225 East Central Avenue or call 423-562-3044. 562-3044. Go Cougars! You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust sick today. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. It's Central in front of Campbell, 34 to 29. The Central lead was once 10 at 27-17. Campbell scored eight straight points to make it 27, changed that seven straight points to make it 27-26. It's been a one point, two point game since here at the break. It's 34 29 as Bozeman hits a bucket right at the buzzer to end the first half. Individually, this first half of action, the Bobcats of Central have played 10 players, five have scored. Chris Bozeman off the bench leads all scorers 19, including three beyond the arc and a dunk. Five from Trey Robinson, four from Joshua Brown, Dante Strickland with four. Keith Perez off the bench with two. Mighty Troy, J.D. Harris scoring, uh, playing, not scoring. Javion Gibby played and did not score, along with D.J. Smith and Efren Rodriguez. For Campbell County, the Cougars are led by Adama Sonogo with ten points. John Long with six. Devin Jones with seven. Four from Gavin Cox. Two from Elijah McKinney at the collectibles and more free throw stripes. Campbell County's Will Lester has played, so has Gavin Owens and David Atkins. Those gentlemen have yet to score. Now, Campbell County has eight players seeing action, five getting into the scoring column here. It is 34-29 Central in front at the intermission. And uh, Coach, Coach Don Atherton, uh, your thoughts on this first half of action, what you liked and maybe what you didn't like so much. Well, I liked the way we came back. We were down by, down by 10, mm -hmm. uh, coming back like that. And, and I, you know, I think the – as well, Jim. You know these kids played last night in a double overtime game. You know, so they're the second half is going to be pretty tough on them. You know, because they're conditioning as well. But uh, you know, I, I like the way they're, they're moving the ball. There's a few. You know, Gavin Cox is doing a great job uh, getting to the weak side on rebounding. You notice when he goes weak side, he gets that tip in right there and, and, and the, at the same motion. And he's uh, he, he's a, he's a good person to have around the ball. But that's the, one of the main things that coach emphasizes every day in practice is go to the weak side rebounding and that's and Gavin's doing that. Cock with some uh, basically all in one motion put backs at least the first one was. Central and Campbell taking second half warm up tosses as Central has played 10 players tonight may may play more but uh, two from the JV team played uh, of course Gavin Owens a JV player also uh, with action here tonight for Campbell County. We'll start the second half in just a moment as it is Central ahead of Campbell, 34-29 on the WLAF Thules Tire Shop Sports Network. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423-01-9799. Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stoplight 10 on East Central at Cumberland Avenue. This is Skeeter with Doyle's Tire Shop. We've been in the same spot since the 1990s. We continue serving you with the same friendly service and top-notch name brand tires as my dad, Doyle, did when he first opened up. This is Lace to Pearls for Girls in downtown La Follette, and this is Jennifer. We're here to serve. We would love to be your personal shopper. We have ladies' collection of clothing in here along with little girls' collection. So let us shop for you. Come and see us Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays in downtown La Follette. 
Whether you're a contractor or you're just handling a project around the house or farm, CNO Metal Sales has the best prices in the tri-state. Metal roofing custom cuts as well as delivery are available from CNO Metal. Be sure and ask us about our lifetime warranty on metal. Matt Klein can handle your big or small jobs from one piece of metal to 100. Select from 22 colors. CNO Metal Sales is right behind O'Reilly's Auto Parts in Middlesboro. Just take a lift at the first stoplight and CNL is on the right. See or call Matt at 606 248 this is Matthew Klein, former Cougar number 42. Come see me at CNL Metal. Central starts the second half with Troy, Harris, Bozeman, Robinson, and Brown. Campbell counters with Atkins, Jones, Long, Sonogo, Cox. Near side, front court right in front of us. Referee William No hands the pass off to Harris, who throws it in to Troy between the circles. Campbell man-to-man, -man, zoned much of the first half, a 3-2 for the most part. Bozeman on the right side, forces up a shot, good. So Bozeman picks up where he left off, scored the last points of the half, first points of this half. Central builds the lead out to 36-29. Full court pressure, Central. Baseball pass, left hand, front court to Cox. From Jones to Sonogo, pump, shoot, scores! Sonogo on the right side, lays in the bucket, matching Bozeman. Basket for basket, 36-31. Central with the basketball in the lead. Bozeman has over half their points, so we need to concentrate on him. Near side, Harris spins down the right side of the lane. Scoop shot, short. Atkins with the rebound. Clears up the far side to Jones. Baseball pass, left hand front court to Long. Look away pass, right side, Sonogo. Shot no good, rebound Long. And Atkins comes over the top for the rebound and the foul is called. Atkins and Long hustling to get that second chance shot. Can't do it. And the foul is called against David Atkins, who fouled out last night. This unofficially is Atkins' first foul of the night. Central with the ball, a five-point lead, 7.02 to play, third quarter. Basket to our right, Central operates, all black jerseys. Trunks, red numerals, trend and white. Bozeman knocks down Jones. That's a block on Jones. Not for a second, Coach. That was going to be the third player control foul for Central. He did extend his arm. So Jones with his second foul. I thought that was a charge myself. So. Well, I thought certainly the way that uh, Jones hit the deck, it had to have been a foul, uh, well, a charging foul. Not so. Robinson to toss it in play. It comes to Bozeman, near wing, inside pass. Brown flicks it on top. Harris, a three try, no good. Jones with the rebound in traffic, and he gets bumped in the face and down by Harris. Harris reaches to help him to his feet as does Gavin Cox. And this foul is against the Central Bobcats. So Devin Jones up and okay. And Jim, when you get a rebound in the paint like this, you need to turn away from the paint. Not turn into the, into the traffic right there. Gavin Cox driving, reversing, shooting. Nice! Oh, he's a right-hander with a left-hand reverse layup. Gavin Cox Took that one to the bank, the hard side bank. A Campbell County big play. Cox with six, 36-33. Central, the lead, the ball, front court basket to our right. Here's Troy, top of the circle. Throws it off far side of the wing to Bozeman. Works off the brown pick, picked up by Cox quickly. Cox right there, throws it across court to Troy, deep near corner. Robinson unloads the three, it's good. Robinson, deep, deep near corner. Robinson on the night for Central with eight, two threes. Central ahead by six, front court. Behind the back dribble, Jones. Cross court pass to Cox. Lost it, got it back. Threw it back to save it to Atkins. Now Jones for a three. Back iron miss. Long reaches for it, and it's Bozeman getting bumped down. Changed that Robinson as Long was going after the ball. Robinson there in between. Long in the basketball. John Long with his first foul unofficially. Team foul three, 39-33. Central ahead. Has the ball baseline backcourt, Campbell County with Atkins, Long, and Jones. Those, those, miss, those missed threes like that are going to be long rebounds like that. <laughs> and they need to realize that. Our guards need to rebound. Bozeman throws it near side. Trey, uh, Troy for a Trey try. No good near wing. Rebound Cox for Campbell. Double hand pass to Long up ahead. Long down the far side. Stops his dribble. Needs help. Bounces it to moving Jones. Driving, shooting, scoring. Jones right side of the bucket. Left hand, Jones with nine, Campbell with 35, down by four. Shot blocked back the other way, foul is called as the Bobcat hits the deck pretty hard. That's Bozeman, he's helped up to his feet. A little slow and 
get it going, but he's okay. His foul is tagged on, of course, the Campbell Cougars. This sends Bozeman to the line. His first trip there has 21 points. His team ahead by four, 39-34. That change at 39-35. Bozeman, two tosses, shooting violation. Flexes the knees, launches the shot. It's good. Bozeman has 22. The team's leading scorer, not starting tonight, but certainly living up to his billing. With 22 points, gunning for 23, his team ahead by five. Looks to make a six-point gap, and he does. Free throw good. So 23 for Jones. Change that Bozeman. 41-35, central ahead of Campbell County. Campbell led one to nothing. Has gotten it within one a couple of times late in the second half, second quarter. Not able to regain the lead. Cox, inside pass to Nogo. Stop, jump, shoot, scores! Sonogo 14 for the second half, 41-37. Central with the ball and a four-point lead. The Cougars have Sonogo, Atkins, Jones, Cox, and Long on the four. That's the same five that started the game in the second half. Deep far corner, Troy, basket to our right. Bounces it to Bozeman, changes that Robinson. It goes out of play off a of Cougar at the end line. It stays with the red, black, and white Central Bobcats. And we need to pressure Troy here. You know, he's... he's uh, Smaller and as well, we need to just contain him and pressure him as much as possible. Here's Robinson for a lay in right side. Good. It's uh, Harris making that play. Robinson with 10. Second, Bobcat in double digits. Central ahead by 6, 43, 37. Long brings it across the stripe with the right hand dribble. Stops the dribble. Hook pass Jones. Jones left for the free throw line to Long on top. Long for Campbell for the basketball. Trying to throw it to Jones. He thought he was moving. Jones did not, and the pass goes out of play on the near sideline. You know, Long handles the ball very, very well for yes. a man of his size. And John has that trouble. He does a very good job with the ball, but, you know, right there, when you get up in the air with the ball and for a jump pass like that. You need to know where you're going you first. Know where you're you? going first. Yeah. Steal by Jones for Campbell. Jones, one-on-one, -on -one, driving, cross the remove, lays it up. Good! Left hand, left side. Jones has 11. Campbell carves it down to a four-point game, 43-39. Coach Ernie Carlson wants a 30-second timeout, 3.56 to play in the third quarter. Neither team is subbed in this second half of action yet. We may see that happen here during this timeout as Campbell trailed at halftime by a score of 34-29. to 29. And Campbell was down by 14 last night and came back and won a double overtime. I thought the Cougars had a slow start, maybe just because of the fact they hadn't played a game in about three weeks. Yes, I, and <coughs> right here, they're starting to warm up a little bit here, but again, we need to pick it up defensively with the, the Bozeman kid, because you know, he's, he's uh, uncanny. You know, he just, he'll, <laughs> he'll put it in somehow, some way. He is, uh, he's very thin, very agile, and- uh, He can jump. Yeah, he's, uh, Got a lot of flexibility about him. Yes, yeah, he, he's a good ball handler. He, yeah. he's, he's a good ball player. Yeah, he's an athlete. There's no doubt about that. And, boy, he can make, make the ball go in the bucket. He's missed, what, maybe one, two shots tonight? 23. We're talking about Chris Bozeman. He's only a junior. Front court, center with the ball. Campbell man-to-man. -man. Cougars ring in Will Lester. Sonogo out. Left side pass. Lay in. Good. This is Robinson, who has a dozen. Seven in the second half, 45-39. He had John Long on Boozman that time, and John might start gardening. David Jones brings it across the stripe. Dogs with Robinson every step of the way. Now we'll take him down the left side of the lane. Driving, shooting, is missing. Rebound by Long, but a foul is called first. Tagged against the Central Bobcats. This is on Troy, his second unofficially. Central has Bozeman, Harris, Robinson, Brown, and Troy in the game, the same five that started the second half. Campbell is brought on Will Lester for Adama Sonogo. Otherwise, the same five. Free throw at the collective is more free throw line by Jones. Is spinning away. No good. Jones with 11. Sonogo with 14. Long with six. A dozen from Robinson. Tops in the game. Bozeman 23. Second toss. But the left-hander is the short arm. Rebound by Brown for Central. 45-39. Jones at the collective is more free throw line. Is made three of six. Front court, Bozeman driving, stopping, blocked by Long, but a foul is called on Long. Long, you can hear it all the way up here. All ball, but uh, the lead official, referee William No, 
Says it's a foul against John Long. Unofficially two on John Long. As uh, Clarence Lowe, the scorekeeper across the way, holds up the two fingers to his right for Coach Ernie Clawson. Bozeman, a couple of tosses, made his last two or his first two just a moment ago. This one is short. A rare miss by the man with the touch. I, I think John, if John would just went, if he wouldn't have brought his arm down like an like a axe, you right. know, if he goes straight up, he'd have been better off. He'd have blocked it still, no foul. Huh? Yeah. Second free throw, Bozeman is short armed. It tipped, saved by Lester, then picked up by Central. One bounce, Brown throws it back out to Troy. Scoops it to Bozeman. Bozeman to Troy, down the left side of the lane. Scoops the shot up, it's good! Troy's first two, took a while. 47-39, Central extends his lead. That was once 10, 27-17. Here it's eight, 47-39, under three minutes to play third quarter. Cox between the circles for Campbell. Cox has it knocked away, saved by Long. Right place, right time. John Long stops, jumps, shoots, rattles around. Good! What a shooter's touch with three defenders wrapped around John Long. His first points in the second half. He has eight, six-point game. Bozeman loses the basketball on the play off his sneaker and his Campbell's basketball. Well, hang on. Umpire Charlie Phillips says it's Central's basketball. The Gavin's exchange. Gavin Cox comes out. Gavin Owens comes on, joining Jones, Lester, Long, and Atkins. Central's ball, near side, front court, basket to our right. Bozeman tosses the ball to Troy in the center circle. Picked up by Atkins in the man-to-man. Throws it far side, Bozeman. This is Owens against Bozeman. He did the job last night against Mason Keaton. Turnaround jumper, good by Robinson. Robinson with 14, has nine in the second half. Bozeman had 19 in the first half. Robinson's picked up where Bozeman left off in that first half of action. Long the other way for Campbell, ball stolen. This is Bozeman driving, dunking. What an athlete. Bozeman with 25. 51-41 Central matching its largest advantage. 144 to play third quarter. Campbell trailed by 10 last night at the end of the third quarter. Won the game a double overtime over Oneida. High pass, long, turns. Bounces it, lays it up. Good, the defender. Robinson slipped down. That's where we need to go, inside. Can you go inside to John or Will, whoever's inside, go to him. For long, 51-43, the ball goes out of the end line. Campbell's basketball, last touch by a jumping J.D. Harris. He'd like to have that one back. Long will toss it to play baseline backcourt. Luke Browning checks on for Campbell, jersey 10. Adama Sonogo, jersey 11. As Lester and Atkins get breathers. Long scoops it into Jones. They share some thoughts in backcourt. No pressure by Central. Sonogo, Browning along with Owens in the game for Campbell. Here's Jones across the midcourt line. Picked up by Robinson. Works off the long pick. Here's to John. John working on the post hard down low. Now it's to Long on the near block. Long, one bounce. Hangs on to it. Turns, fades, shoots, misses. Tapped out, saved by Central. Brown with the recovery to Troy. Front court down the far side, Harris. Harris, a delay. Then he holds up, throws it back to a trailing Troy. Far side. Ask it to our right. Central has Brown. We had a position in the center circle to hand it to Troy. Campbell stays man-to-man. Luke Browning defending Troy. Troy passes it near side. Harris, nearly a travel. Turns, fades, shoots. Long with a foul, they say. A hack on Harris. Under 50, that is three on John Long. As we're waiting to see officially from Clarence Lowe how many John Long has. Under 50, that is three on number 55. At the free throw line, J.D. Harris and Central ahead by eight. 36 seconds left, third quarter. Harris with his first trip to the strike. Yet to score tonight. First to two, good. Harris has one. Kevin Cox hustles in for Campbell as Cox, as uh, Logan, uh, John Long checks out. So Cox joins Owens, grounding Adama in Jones. Free throw, short arm, it rebound. Gavin Cox with authority bounces it to Sonogo, who hands it off to Devin Jones. Harris, one for two at the strike tonight, 52 43. Quarter winding down, 25 seconds. Jones, near wing, needs help, hands it off to Browning. Browning for Campbell to Jones. Double team near side. Jones for Campbell will work with the dribble, gets bumped down the left side of the lane, forces up a shot, and a push is called on Central. 
I don't think the shot would have counted. I think that was before he left the floor. Third foul on Mighty Troy. And Campbell, well, Campbell's in the bonus now, but not on this possession. But from here forward, 11.7 seconds left. As he faced the basket to our left, Jones will toss it and play on the near side. The basket to our left, Jones looking. Here's Sonogo, catches it deep near corner, tries to tray. It is missing, rebounded by Central. That's Brown, stolen by Adama. Adama in the lane, right side, Cox. Cox, four seconds. Cross-court pass, Jones intercepted Central. Two seconds, one second, and the horn barks, and the quarter comes to a close. Central 52, Campbell 43, back in a moment for the fourth quarter on the WLA of Thor's Tire Shop Sports Network. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. You work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. Campbell County trailed Oneida by 10 to start the fourth quarter last night, wound up winning a double overtime. Here Campbell trails Central by 9, 52 to 43. Near side midcourt, Gavin Cox to toss it in play. He's joined by Sonogo Jones. Long has three fouls and David Atkins in the game for Campbell. Central has Brown, Harris, Troy, inside pass long. Fades, shoots, trickles away. A foul is called on Central. This is on Robinson, who's in the game along with Bozeman, the Central five. And Robinson commits his second foul unofficially. John Long at the collective was a more free throw stripe. He missed his first two tries there tonight. See what he can do here. He has and, 10 points. And that's a good out of bounds play from the quarter, too. He, he, John got position, got that kid on his hip and, to get the ball underneath. We need to start making free throws. Rodriguez checks in for Robinson as Campbell County has missed three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Free Nine. throw number two, no good. Rebound by Long for Campbell. Long, deep near corner, skip pass. Jones, 52 to 43. Cox, right corner, three. Long miss, goes out of play near side. It is last touched by Central. Campbell's ball. Cooper's catching a break here. It looked like it was off John, didn't it? But I, I thought it was. Uh, let's don't say that too loudly. <laughs> Jones to toss it in play. Front court, baseline. Basket to our left. Atkins for Campbell. Driving, running, shooting, missing. He'll shoot two free throws as a result. As Rodriguez commits the foul for the Central Bobcats. Rodriguez, second foul tonight. The junior. Played a lot in the JV game. David Atkins steps to the collectibles more free throw stripe. Yet the score tonight, he has nine, had nine last night in a big effort. A lot of steals, uh, deflections, rebounds for Atkins along with his nine points. He's at the stripe now for a 15-foot free toss. And he was having a great game last night until he fouled out. You know, if oh, he, he was. You know, and I, I think he was a, you know, we talked earlier in the season how, you know, David and, and Devin and John need to be in double figures. And, well, I think and, uh, that was David's maybe best game of the season. Yes, yes. <coughs> but you're right. I interrupted you. That's okay. <laughs> David Atkins, second toss. Gosh sakes. Short God. rebound by Cox. Cox fades, shoots, scores! Cox with the board of the bucket. Cox with eight, four in each half, 52 to 46. Campbell down by six. Five to play. Cox with another take it to the bank. Outside bank, big play, steal by John Long. Long chased by Harris. Long driving, pumping, shooting, missing the follow by Sonogo. The foul and the push on Harris. This sends John Long to the line to shoot two at the collectibles and more free throw stripe. Harris unofficially with three fouls. John Long looking for a change of fortune here. 
as he's 0 for 4 at the stripe. 10 points for his night's work so far by 6, 7-17 to go in the ball game. Long, toss, good. Textbook swishing through for John Long. Will Lester checks in for Adama Sonogo. Joining Long, Jones, Adkins, Cox. Back to the stripe, the blue stripe. Long with some more free throws, has a dozen. Carves that lead down to four, 52 to 48. So Campbell has scored five straight unanswered to start the second, to start the fourth quarter. Front court, Campbell lines up in a man-to-man. Long guarding Rodriguez at the free throw line, posting high. Lester guarding Brown. Here goes Bozeman. Blew a shot. Rebound by Lester for Campbell. Here comes Jones. Jones, three on three. Bounce pass left side. Atkins bounces it once, puts it up. No good. He's fouled. David Atkins for Campbell. One for two at the collector. was more free throw line a moment ago. Is fouled by D.J. Smith, his first. And this is David Atkins for two tosses at the collector. was a more free throw strike. Atkins for Campbell County, number five in the orange, white, and blue. Toss, short armed it. So Atkins, one for three. And you know the way John, <laughs> John Long shot his free throws, and now David Atkins, it uh, makes you wonder if the legs are kind of playing in there after last night's. Uh, it, it might uh, be. It might you know, be, Sam. Uh, uh, long game. Here's the second toss. Atkins, I said that just to jinx him so he'd make it. There you go. You know, as a player, though. You, you start getting your legs in. You got to get your legs into your shots. Well, yeah, right whether now. it's a jumper or a free throw. And here, Central calls timeout. Central's yet to score this quarter. Campbell's carved it down to a three-point game as it trailed nine heading into the fourth quarter. A pause in the action. Central 52, Campbell 49. You're following Campbell basketball in the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network. There are two types of hot water heaters, thankless and tankless. The thankless kind work like this. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. Hold off on that. I'm hopping in the shower. Renai tankless water heaters work this way. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. No problem. You get an endless supply of hot water even for multiple tasks at the same time. With a natural gas water heater from PCUD, you get hot water twice as fast as same size electric and for about half the cost. Chop down your hot water energy cost hundreds of dollars a year with PCUD in La Follette or Rocky Top. Renai Tankless Water Heaters, the hot way to heat water. It's 50 to play in the ball game. Central gets the score in the fourth quarter. It's all Campbell, six straight points to carve a nine-point game. Don Anthony down to a three-point gap here at 52-49. Central calls a timeout. Certainly a need for a little concern here with the Campbell County fourth quarter start. Yes, and I think uh, going inside to John Long or Gavin, whoever's playing inside, is, is, is a big thing right now. And, and they're looking for... Inside, you know, we haven't had that many outside shots so far. Everything's been inside, and that's where he should be. And we need to score over again when the clock is stopped. And we need some defensive stops right here. Lester, Cox, Long, Atkins, Jones, the five for Campbell, Bozeman, Troy, Brown, Rodriguez, Gibby, the five for Coach Joe Ward. Central in front court, basket to our right, Gibby, far side, flicks it back and forth with Troy, posting high, Brown, also Rodriguez, Campbell, man to man. No, Campbell's uh, shifted to do his own, looks like. A little bit of his own here, maybe. It's a box. Okay. It's a box and one on, on Bozeman. Box on Bozeman. The, yeah. the one is uh, Devin Jones. What well, we talked about in, in the break. Well, we did, didn't we? Yes. I was napping on you there. 52 to 49. Central by three. 6.20 to play in the ball game. And Bozeman being shadowed by Devin Jones. 25 for Bozeman tonight. 19 of those came in the first half. And it's been a while since he scored. He's been quiet. Campbell's had Jones defending Bozeman. Gavin Owens, John Long, now back to Jones. Deep near corner, Brown. High pass, stolen by Atkins, re-stolen by Troy. Here's side, Brown, near side, Brown for a three. Air ball, rebounded by Campbell County's Cox. And now Central has it. Got to be three seconds. There. That is uh, timeout Central. That ball touched the iron barely. So timeout by the Bobcats. 5.49 to play in the ball game. Central still in a stalemate here without points in the fourth quarter. That, I think that box and one kind of confused him a little bit right here offensively because they, you know, they stood outside here and was kind of figuring things out. And uh, you might see Ernie change up defense a little bit or he might go back to the same thing because he's right now Joe's making an adjustment for that box and one. Well, where did you ever hear the first box and one? Where was the first box and one you heard about? <laughs> I know they used to do that to me. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can see that. <laughs> in, in, in college, but uh, uh, man, uh, I got, I'm, I'm thinking Dean Smith kind of thing, well, wasn't it? The first one I came across was uh, Coach Ray Mears of Tennessee used the box and won against Pete Maravich. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All Maravich's right. lowest scoring games in his career were against Tennessee. Would he score 40 instead of 58? 58. No, <laughs> he, I think every game he had was 25 or less. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to go back and look, but uh, it's got to be pretty close. Set with the basketball down uh, up by three, 5.45 to play. Campbell returns Jones, Long, Atkins, Lester, and Cox out of the line of the timeout. Central with the same five, Gibby, Rodriguez. Rodriguez with the ball. Intercepted by Lester for Campbell County. Looks like a linebacker, doesn't he? <laughs> what a football player. What an athlete. Lester, here it comes to Atkins, deep near corner. Long driving, and that is a blocking foul on Central. One and one for Campbell. John Long there to knock down Rodriguez. Boy, he's getting up smarting on that one. Bumped that left elbow pretty hard on John Brown Court. John Long at the collectibles, a more free throw strike. Has one if he makes it a bonus. Here comes Robinson back in. Rodriguez checks out. Long with a dozen. He's two for six at the strike. He tried to pull his team to within one. Makes the first, gets the bonus. John Long for Campbell. Toss, ah. comes out. Cox tried to get it, and it goes out of play on Sickle. Thanks to Cox, he forced it off the body of Brown. That's Rodriguez' third foul, by the way. Devin's doing an excellent job on the boards tonight. Change that, Dean. That's DJ Smith's second foul. Smith, not Rodriguez. Comes to Long in backcourt, hangs on to it, throws it finally to Jones. Driving, shooting, missing, rebound. Atkins for Campbell. Atkins turns, fades, shoots, and goes away, missing. Foul by Brown, but Atkins will have a couple of free throws as a result. This is on Joshua Brown, his third. DJ Smith is number 33. Efren Rodriguez is number 20. I've called DJ Smith Rodriguez uh, the last little bit he's been in the game here. David Atkins at the collective was a more free throw strike for two tosses. The basket to our left. Atkins for Campbell. Swish. Now that looks like David Atkins in practice yes, there. Yes, yes. And he, he watches, and, he, and he's Ernie just yelling at him as well to get your legs into it. Atkins for Campbell with three at the collectibles, a more free throw stripe. His team down by two, 5-14 to play. Central yet to score in this quarter. Second toss, a little short, but it crawls on over the shooter's touch for number five. Atkins with four. Campbell to win one, 52 to 51. Campbell has scored eight points in this quarter. Central yet to post any points. Campbell trailed by 10 last night going into the fourth quarter. Wound up winning over Oneida here on Brown Court in double overtime. 52-51. Campbell's not led since they were ahead one to nothing on a free throw by Adama Sonogo early in the game. Central front court. Here goes Gibby, almost a travel. Foul on Campbell. This may be on Lester. Two-shot violation, shooting violation. And Brent Lester, the guilty party for Campbell. And this sends Gibby to the stripe. Zavion Gibby, a sophomore. Well, that was a good foul by Will. I mean, he didn't score. And uh, <coughs> Gil gave up, his, uh, gave up the foul for it. Toss good by Gibby. So Central's first points of the fourth quarter come with 4.50 to play. So three minutes and 10 seconds without points. And none from the field just yet. Gibby. Got it? Yep. Yeah. Fell on in. Gibby has two, both of the stripe. Three-point game, 54-51. Campbell with the ball, Central with the lead. Here's the defender, Bozeman meeting Jones to the midcourt line, throwing it to the near side to Lester. Lester bouncing it inside, John Long tipped away, saved by Long. Little uh, body action there, Robinson gets bumped down. Long turns, fades, shoots, scores off the glass. In traffic. Long with 14, it's a one-point gap. 54-53, Central has the ball in the lead. Front court, basket to our right, Campbell. The box and one, up top, Long and Atkins, down low, Cox and Lester. Off the dribble pass, Gibby to Troy, near the center court line. Picks it back to a moving Bozeman. Bozeman. Can you get up on him? He got it. He just doesn't miss. 28 for Bozeman, it's been a while, but uh, he burns Campbell, 57-54, four point game. 350 and counting. 28 for Bozeman on about a 20 point per game average. Jones for Campbell. 
Jones in front court, timeout, Cougars. Coach Ernie Clausing to draw something up, grabs the clipboard, and here goes the timeout. 57-53, Campbell down by four, 340 to play. The Cougars need points here and a stop at the next trip. Yes, you know, you know right here, Ernie's going to have a side out play and get John under the basket. That's what I would do. I would, I would, I would go low to John Long, you know, because there's nobody that stopped him yet. And uh, when O'Donnell gets back in there, really nobody's stopping him. Gavin Cox is playing a great job on the boards and underneath the basket. Uh, wouldn't hesitate any, any either or is to get the ball low, get the ball down underneath the basket. 14 points each, Adama Sonogo, John Long. 11 from Devin Jones, 4 from David Atkins, 8 from Gavin Cox, 2 from Elijah McKinney for the Campbell total of 53. Chris Bozeman, 28 points. He and Robinson have 42 of the Bobcats' 57 points. The rest shared among Brown, 4, Strickland, 4, 2, Perez, 2 for Troy, 1 from Harris, 2 from Gibby. And we're not doing a bad job of containing Bozeman, okay? I mean, he's, he's got nine points for the whole second half. He just makes his shots. Yes. You know, again, we we got to come up on him and contest those shots. We have to contest it. Cox, near side. Basket to our left, front court. To toss it to play, and it comes to Lester. One bounce back to Cox. Posted to the free throw line long. Now takes the pass on the near block. Fronting him is Robinson as he came across the top. That should put Campbell in the double bonus. That foul on Robinson, it's a one and one, but I think that is foul 10. And that's five fouls on Robinson. So Robinson exits the game with 3.35 to play. That is a double bonus now for Campbell. That is the 10th foul. Central in the single bonus. John Long at the collectibles, a more free throw stripe. He's two for eight there tonight. Seven. Change that three for eight. John Long with 15, his team down by three. Long toss, rattles in, rattles out. Out of the play, out of play, in line, last touch, simple. Campbell gets the ball right back. A three would tie it here. Campbell has not made a three tonight. That may say something about the legs. Inside pass, Adkins, far side of the free throw lane. Those that are across the lane to Long, Long, double team. Needs help, finds Jones, deep near side. Jones in the lane, has the ball knocked away. Long picks it up, fakes, shoots, misses. Rebounded by Central. That's Harris, throws it to Troy, who will bring it to front court down the far side. Quick pass, deep corner. This is Bozeman. Bozeman getting free, throwing it to Brown, now slowing up to Harris on the top of the circle, back to Bozeman. Dog by Jones in the man-to-man, -man, or the box and one. Bozeman throws it away, gets bumped down. He's up and okay, slowly. Here's Atkins driving, faking, shooting, scoring! David Atkins with six, the buck on the left side of the the glass with the right hand, one point game. 57, 56, Central by one. Central has scored five points in the fourth quarter. Campbell County has scored 13. Front court, basket to our right. Bozeman, far side of the wing. Double team there, back to Troy. 235 to play. To Gibby, near side, back to Troy. Troy, touch pass Brown. Now to Bozeman, touch pass Gibby, left side, lays it in. Good. Chase that, that's Harris. Harris has three his first field goal, three-point game, 2.23 to play in the ball game. Central 59, Campbell 56. Jones will bring it across the strike to the left-hand dribble. Hands it off to Cox on top to Long. Long for Campbell, spins, jumps in the air, throws a spinning hook pass to Cox. Left side of the key, Cox for three. Banked it in! Cox with 11. We're not in at 59, the closest Campbell has been since it was 3-3. Three three. Gavin Cox with the Dr. Joe Browning 2020 tray. Everybody saw that one. I'm not sure if he called it as a bank when he let it go, though. It sure looked good. It did. Front court. 95 seconds to play. John Long with a foul. That's a 1-1. One one. The Central Bobcats, unofficially, that is 4. On John Long, it is. Clarence Lowe, the scorekeeper, holds up the four fingers for Coach Ernie Clawson. Bozeman's well, not a good person to foul. Well, he, he again, he makes his shots, whether yeah, they're yeah. free with no defender or whether there's somebody close by. 59-59. Bozeman, 28 points tonight. He's 2-3 at the stripe. Make that 2-4. for four. 
tip saved by Cox, last touched by Campbell at the end line. Oh, hang on, hang on. Charlie Phillips, the umpire there, gave it to Campbell and then said, oh, wait, I meant to go this way. So 135 to play. Harris on the far side of the glass, front court, basket to our right, we'll toss it in play. And it comes to Bozeman, alone, deep corner, he nailed it. Bozeman with 31. He has four trays tonight, 62 to 59. 85 seconds to play as Campbell County had caught Central at 59 and Central with Bozeman to drop one in. Jones in front court, 80 seconds to play. Campbell down by three. Jones driving through, laying it up, got it. Jones all the way to the hole, lays it in, 62-61. It's Central ahead by one and Campbell County calling a full timeout or is it? It is a full timeout. It's, it's a pause full. for us. 62-61. Central ahead of Campbell. 116 to play. You're following Campbell basketball on the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network. Quality and Clayton go hand in hand. That's quality constructed homes from Clayton Homes. The staff at Clayton Homes, located right here at home in Campbell County at Jacksboro, is ready to help you through all the steps of home ownership, from selecting the home that's just right for you to putting the keys in your hand. Since 1956, Clayton Homes has been making dreams come true. See the home folks about your new dream home from Clayton Homes, 110 North Street near Jacksboro Middle School. Call or just come on by. Campbell huddling with Coach Ernie Clawson across the way to our left. A lot of wet jerseys tonight. Boy, the Cougars have poured it on. Yes. Central breaks from its huddle, bringing Bozeman, Troy, Harris, Gibby, and Brown back in the fourth. Campbell counters with Cox and Jones, Lester, Long, and Atkins. Atkins will apply some moderate backcourt pressure. He's there with Bozeman. And now the pass will come instead to Gibby. Gibby will toss it across the floor backcourt to Troy, who brings it across with a left-hand dribble. Now to Bozeman, and a push by Atkins. Atkins can afford to foul tonight. He was uh, nursing fouls all night last night. That's only the second on David Atkins. 68 seconds to play. Bozeman steps to the strike for two. A change that of one plus one. And Ernie told him just, to, he just said not to foul. He just told him not to foul. So that was a hand check which he's let go the first half and the first three quarters. Bozeman good. Bozeman with 32. He is three of five with the stripe. 32 points. 13 this half. Bozeman toss, rattles, no good. Rebound as Gavin Cox gets knocked down. He's up and okay, but Central gets the rebound as a result. And Brown may have gotten a finger in the eye. Central has the basketball up by two. Almost a steal. Is a steal by Jones. Jones driving, faking, shooting, scoring on the left side. Jones with 15, 63 all. Campbell and Central, 46 seconds to play. Front court pass to Brown. Now throws it to Troy. Look away pass, Gibby. Now to the right side, that's Harris. Left side, Harris, no good. Rebound, Harris. And he scoops it to a trailing Bozeman. Far side, Bozeman. Stop, jump, shoots, misses. Rebound by Harris and a foul on Campbell. 63-63, 28 seconds to play. Each team in the double bonus. Two timeouts, Central, none for Campbell. And to the line is J.D. Harris. And they got three extra shots right then, too. Two, what, two extra offense rebounds. We're, get, we're getting too far into the basket right here. Credit J.D. Harris. Harris at the basket to our right. The two free throws. Shot, good. So Harris has four. He is two for three at the stripe. But he's the man who kept it going. Lester comes out. Sonogo comes on, joining Cox, Jones, Long, and Atkins. J.D. Harris, a junior for Coach Joe Ward. Back of the line. Toss, good. So it's a two-point game, 65-63. Harris is the man who has kept Central, kept Campbell at bay with the Central rebounds and the putbacks near with the conversion of two free throws and the timeout by Central. So Central with one timeout remaining and ahead 65-63. We've had three ties tonight, 63, 59, and three. Campbell led one to nothing, has not led since. Campbell led two to nothing last night and didn't lead again till the first overtime. 
That's when it counts, I guess, right, Jim? There you but go. but uh, I think he's uh, what uh, Central's going to do right here. You're going to see some token pressure or, or trap or something to to mix things up, not just to let Devin walk up the floor with the ball. I, I think they're going to pressure. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, some kind of trap or something to get get the get the ball out of his hands. Don't want to make it easy. No, you don't want to make it easy. Campbell County down by two. 28.6 seconds to play. Jones, Long, Cox, Sonogo, Atkins return from the huddle. Here come Gibby. And here comes the pressure. Brown, <coughs> Bozeman, Harris. Troy will apply pressure on Jones. Long, the inbounder. Baseline backcourt. Handed in to Jones. Now Jones gets bumped by Troy. Coach Joe Ward didn't want that. So Troy commits and officially his fourth foul. This sends Devin Jones to the collectibles of more free throw strike for two tosses. He can tie the game here, 25.3 seconds to play. Jones of Southpaw wears jersey number two. He's number eight in football. Picked up that uh, coach's All-State Award earlier this week. First of two, nice. Nothing but rope. 16 for Devin Jones at the collectibles more free throw stripe. Here comes Will Lester in for Adama Sonogo. And then Harris and Brown exchanging sides of the four on the free throw lane. A little more body there, Brown, for uh, the size of Will Lester. One point game. Jones will tie it. Yes, he does. At the collective more free throw stripe. 17 for Jones. And, and Bozeman's going to get to. Here, he'll have the ball. Yep, here he goes. We're all even at 65. Bozeman near the center court line with the basketball, but by Jones. 15.8 seconds left. Jones with his third foul. He's very animated there in front of official Charlie Phillips. 65-65. 15.8 seconds to play. Bozeman is human. He has missed two free throws tonight. He has 32 points. Inside those 32 points, four threes. The basket to our right, number 11 in the black, red, and white. Toss, got it. He's a player. Making it count when it, making it, count when it has to. Sonogo checks in. Lester checks out. Joining Cox and Jones, Long and Atkins as Jones watch the bottoms of the sneakers. Back to the line. Chris Bozeman flexes the knees, tosses the shot. It is good. So 34 for Bozeman. Two-point game, 15 seconds to play. Campbell can tie or win. 12 seconds. Jones for Campbell. Jones will drive through, lays it up. Got it. They're even. Six seconds. No foul. Here. in a hurry. Three seconds. Two seconds. Lead pass. One second. Lay up. Counts if it goes and misses. We'll go to overtime. David Atkins with a block at the buzzer. Jones with 19, working his magic again, streaking down the floor of the left side. The hard driving layup counts, and it's all even at 65 as we head to overtime. In that fourth quarter, Don Atherton, Campbell County scored 22 points. Central scored 13. Mm. <coughs> well, we need to keep making our free throws, Jim, because it's, it's both teams in a double bonus. And, uh, you know, right now it's, it's when it counts. And, and I think uh, they're, they're gonna, Bozeman's going to have the ball. And, and what they're doing is they're taking a man from the corner and flashing to the basket. When he, when he has that up top, just like he did just then. With Harris. <laughs> With Harris, yes. And so I, I think we can just uh, continue to play good, hard defense here. You know, and just, to, again, keep them to one shot. The last three, four minutes, Jim, they've had two, three shots every time they come down. They've missed most of those, but they've had them. Yeah. yeah. And 60. I, I think if we just box out and even defensively, you go to the weak side rebound, and we're getting too far under the basket because we're jumping back at the ball, so they need to realize that and come off the basket a little bit. 67-67. We start the overtime, four minutes. Central has two timeouts because they had one left at the end of regulation. Campbell has one timeout. Both teams with the double bonus. And we'll jump it up again. Gavin Cox will leap for Campbell. Campbell shoots at the basket to our left. It's Jones, Atkins, Cox the jumper. Sonogo and Long for Campbell. Long with 16 points. 19 from Jones, 14 from Sonogo, Long or Cox with 11. Coach Joe Ward counters with Harris and Troy, Gibby, Bozeman, and Brown. Harris will leap with Gavin Cox. There's Cox and Long exchanging some conversation there. 
Referee William No steps in, taps it up, controlled by Campbell. Jones bounces to Long. Long can't get at the end line, and Central comes away. Almost a travel. Steal by Jones. Jones pumps, shoots, misses. He'll have two shots as a result. What hustle by Campbell County. I think that, I thought that Central walked, and I think the walk is what got the pass to go so errant to Jones. Jones at the collectibles, a more free throw stripe. He has 19. He's he and his team even with Central at 67. Toss, Jones, rattles away, no good. Jones for Campbell County, back for one more. The collectibles, more free throw strike. 67, I thought we were 65 at the end of regulation. Second free throw, no good. Tapped out, last touch by Central. John Long there with a the hustle. I, I think we need to, you know, we need to concentrate on our free throws. I'm telling you, we, this play wouldn't win overtime. We'd have made them, right? You got it. <laughs> Inbound play comes to Atkins. Baseline near side. Has a strength of by, by Troy, and he's driving to the bucket. Here's Bozeman, front court. Has it knocked away by Atkins, and Atka Cox with the foul. That's Cox knocking it away from Bozeman, and then knocking him down. Bozeman to shoot two. <laughs> so for Cox, number 12, that's his first foul unofficially. You know, Cox for a, a big man, 6'4", 215, doesn't foul much. No, you know, and <clears throat> last year he was in foul trouble all the time in JV. You know, but uh, he's, he's worked at his game. He's, he's moving his feet a lot better. He's gotten a little bit quicker. And uh, you know, Gavin's really, really improved. Six free throws tonight by Bozeman. He has 35 points. Second toss by Bozeman. Is, he short-armed it. Rebound raked away by Campbell County's Devin Jones. 68-67, Central by one. Look who's guarding John. Inside Nobody. pass, John. Baby hook, off the glass, good. John Long with 18. Campbell takes the lead for the first time since it was one to one. One to nothing, 69-68, Campbell County. 3.15 to play in the ball game. The free throw by Jones. And Campbell with the field goal by Change that uh, the field goal by Long, the missed free throw by Jones. Here's Troy with a twice side tray. It is no good. Adama Sonogo waits patiently for the rebound, and a jump basketball is called. It's Central's possession. Though Sonogo hits the deck. Cougar fans wanted a foul. To face the basket to our right, Harris will toss it and play at the baseline on the near side. Takes the handoff from official J.B. Brown. And it comes to Bozeman. Bozeman works the baseline, forces up a shot. It's good, he's fouled. A push on Atkins. Atkins saying, nope, I didn't do it. Third on Atkins. Bozeman has 37. 70 to 69, Central ahead. Bozeman tonight made his last two free throws. There at the line, short-armed it. You can tell as soon as you let it go, Sonogo gets the rebound with Jones. Let's it go to Sonogo. Inside pass, Long lays it up good. Long with 20, 71-70. Campbell County with the lead again. Front court central, basket to our right. 237 and counting. Team that has the ball last may win this one. Or may go to a second overtime like we did last night. Front court, Bozeman with the basketball. Long and lean, double team by Atkins. Stolen by Atkins. Baseball pass front court to Jones. Jones driving, shooting, missing. Rebound by Troy for Central. Front court, far side Harris. Harris dancing with his dribble, picked up by John Long. Off the dribble pass comes to Troy. 71-70 Campbell, 2-10 to play. And now timeouts requested. 2.08 to go in the, the overtime. 71-70 Campbell with the lead. And much like last night, Campbell County led 2-0 early. Never led again to the overtime here tonight. Campbell led 1-0 on a Sonogo free throw. It did not lead again until the bucket by John Long to make it 69-68 here in the extra session. I think sometimes you know, we, we start going harder when we need to, other than going hard all the time. You know, I, I, I think with this effort they're doing right now, if you think if you put that in the first quarter, first you half? Be, you wouldn't be in overtime. <laughs> you wouldn't be in overtime, right. Campbell County, 71, Central 70. Of Central 70 points, Chris Bozeman has 37. 14 of those have come from Trey Robinson. He fouled out with 335 to go in the ballgame, so that's a big miss 
for Central. Coach Ernie Clawson sends his team of Cox, Owens, Jones, Long, and Sonogo back to the four. Coach Joe Ward sends Brown, Gibby, Troy, Harris, Bozeman. Harris, the inbounder, down in front of us to our right, near side front court basket to our right. Central down by one with the ball, 205 to play. Both teams with the timeout, both teams with the double bonus. Possession error favors Campbell. Front court, Central. It's Cox now on the chaser against Bozeman. Knocks the ball away from him. Gets it back. Bozeman springs free. Lost and stolen by Cox. Stay back in. Here's Owens with the ball for Campbell. Now it's loose again. Jones in the fray. And a jump basketball is Campbell's basketball. So the Cougars with a stop on a steal. What hustle by Cox and Owens and Jones. Yes, yeah, so they all got their hands on it. Just, just pick it up and we we're, were very fortunate right there. So flick pass comes in to Jones in backcourt who's guarded by Harris this time as opposed to Troy. Front court, Jones. Campbell can hold the ball. 90 seconds to play. Ball poked free from behind, then restilled it, retaken by Troy for Central. 127 to play. Troy in front court. His team down by one, 80 seconds to play in the first overtime. Bozeman, guarded by Gavin Owens. Owens, pass goes far side, Harris. Harris for Central. Far side, picked up by Sonogo over there. 68 seconds, clock rolls. Each team with a timeout, possession error favors Central. You see the double bonus. Troy for a three. He's good. Troy with ice water in his veins makes it 73 to 71. 55 seconds to play. Long for Campbell will bring it across the stripe himself. John Long for Campbell will drive. Little hook pass coming back to Owens. Owens back to Long. Long in traffic lays it up. Good. John Long with 22. Campbell County knocks the game at 73. Central may hold for the last shot. 32 seconds. The timeout for each team. Here's Bozeman stopping, throwing down low. Harris lays it up and in. Harris has seven. Central by two. 75 72. Lead pass against pressure comes into Jones in front court. Jones driving all the way through, puts up a shot. He's fouled. Bucket would not would have counted, but he missed it. 75 73. 15 seconds to play. The foul is called on Chris Bozeman. That is three on Bozeman. So Devin Jones with 19 points. Step to the collectibles more free throw strike to shoot two free throws. His team down by two, 75-73. Jones, left hands the shot up and in. Jones with 20, he and Long combined for 42. Add 11 to that, that's 53 with Cox's 11. And then 67 from Sonogo's 14. 67 from those four of Campbell's 74 points. 75, 74. Jones, nope. short arm. Rebound, Cox. Cox lost it. It's Central's basketball. 75, 74, Central by one. And now timeouts requested by Central. 13.7 seconds remain. 75-74 Central. Campbell needs a steal. Possession error favors Central. If not a steal right away, we're going to have to foul. And hope and don't foul Bozeman. But uh, he does miss free throws once in a while. He's missed a couple. He's probably probably can't can count the uh, number of misses on one hand for Bozeman. 37 points. I, I say we've missed at least 10 or 12. Just because of one ones, you know. Yes, free you know, huh? The beginnings of one and ones. That, you know, you figure if you miss the first one, really you miss two because you had an opportunity to shoot two. You right? Take away that chance. You take away that chance. So it's a. We've had our opportunities. And yeah, based on last night, still a long way to go. There's George Marlowe waving the former Win Bulldog. I think he's going to call it a night. <laughs> he's uh, moseying toward the door. His granddaughter plays for the Central Lady Bobcats, and she saw action tonight as Campbell won the game with Central. Bella Marlowe is her name. She's a freshman at Central. Campbell returns Long, Cox, Jones, Owen, Sonogo, Central Harris, Gibby, Troy, Bozeman, of course, and Brown. And now the inbound hold on Cox 
tags Troy. This will send Troy to the line. You know they talked about that in the huddle, who they're going to foul. Yes. And uh, so by doing that, obviously you save a lot of time as opposed to getting the ball in front court and then trying to chase someone. Right. I think it's a, you know, <coughs> it's a good it was a good thing to do. You have to do that, Jim. You, you got to. You don't have any choice. Troy, two points, a field goal. His first time of the strike. Toss, good. Troy has three, two-point game. Owens checks out, Anthony checks in to join Jones, Cox, Sonogo, and Long. Troy back to the line, his team ahead, 76-74, 12.8 seconds to play. Toss is rattling around, no good. Rebound by Brown, last touched by Campbell. Brown had it, threw it back in, went off Campbell hands. That's important. This time of the game, you need to box out, do what you're supposed to do. We didn't box out right there. And it's rare that you uh, give up a, a rebound on a missed free throw if you're the defensive team. Here yes. he is, Harris, to throw it in play at the end line. The Bozeman bounces it to Brown. Stolen by Campbell. Jones has it. 76 74. Five seconds. Jones front court, three seconds. Driving, shooting, scoring! We'll have a second overtime. Seventy-six, seventy-six. Nothing's been decided just yet, has it? No. You think is is knowing that Devin goes to his left. Uh, our, you know, they would force him the other way, but somehow, some way, he always gets it through, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. Uh, just an incredible athlete. I'm not sure which uh, sport is is better, football or basketball. Uh, well, you know, I. I <laughs> He's just a good athlete all the way around. There's no question about that. He'd probably go outside and hit it better than you and me. Oh, yeah. I think his uh, papa Donnie Jones would agree with that. <laughs> but, you know, this overtime here, Jim, we, we need to just buckle down defensively and keep them to one shot. That, that The last three or four minutes, we were giving them two and three shots. Jones set the tone last night in the second overtime. Campbell came out, and he buried a three, and the game was never the same. Uh, though it was close, Campbell won 78-76. Here it's 76-76 after one overtime. And uh, the Cougars and the Bobcats, Campbell didn't lead again after trailing one, uh, leading early one to nothing, didn't lead again until it uh, took the lead in the overtime at 69-68 on the John Long putback. I, I think they're going to do it. You know, did, did, <coughs> again, he's probably going to maybe stay, stay with his box and one. If he does, when Bozeman gets it, you need to somewhat trap him. And mm -hmm. uh, number one here, you know, the, the Troy kid is a, a decent ball handler, but not as good as Bozeman. And, and I would I would uh, pressure him when he gets the ball as well. well. Bozeman has a complete package. Yes, he does. He and Jones sharing some thoughts. Here's Harris to jump with Cox. Campbell has Cox, Jones, Atkins, Long, and Lester. William No steps in to toss it up. Ball tapped up, controlled by Campbell County's Jones. Takes it away from Troy. Gets bumped down, continues his dribble in backcourt. What <laughs> ball handling by Devin Jones. Marcus Haynes right there. Oh, it's unreal. You know firsthand about Marcus Haynes. <laughs> Campbell front court, deep far corner. Atkins launches a tray. Long miss. Here's the rebound by Brown for Central. Scoops it to Troy. Troy, Brown, Gibby, Harris, Bozeman the five. For Coach Joe Ward. Front court, Bozeman with the basketball. David Atkins there to pick him up. Campbell in a man-to-man. -man. Bozeman's getting the attention to David Atkins. He's had uh, Devin Jones, uh, John Long, uh, Gavin Owens, and now David Atkins to defend him. He's poured through 37 points, 76-76. Front court central, basket to our right. Standing coach Joe Ward with his baseball cap on backwards across the way. That's a central baseball cap, by the way. Steal by Atkins for Campbell, and a foul called on Bozeman. Coach Ernie Clawson tapping back the other way in his gray Cougar shirt with the orange CC on there. So for Bozeman, that is four unofficially. And we need to put the free throws down right here. David Atkins at the collectibles more free throw stripe. He is four for six tonight with six points, 76-76. We've played 62 seconds so far in this overtime. Nobody has put through any points. Atkins with a missed three. Now we'll try some free shots at the left end. Both teams in the double bonus. Toss, Atkins, good. 
Atkins with seven for Campbell. Gives his team a one point lead. 77-76, Banskin to our left for the 15 foot free toss. Here's Atkins, spins the ball, takes the deep breath, bounces it a couple of times, three in fact, launches the shot, it is good. good David. Rattled, but fell through, eight for Atkins. Campbell ahead, 78-76. This is Campbell County's largest lead of the night. They could possibly get a charge out of Bozeman right here when he comes off this screen. Unofficially with four right. fouls. There he is between the circles to the free throw line to Brown to Gibby. Gibby driving through to Harris. Harris in traffic. Gibby deep far corner for a three. It is missing. Rebound by Campbell's Jones. Jones for Campbell with the basketball. We'll bring it to front court. Basket to our left. As LaFala Fire Chief Jimmy Pack says, now this is basketball. Where's he been all night? Good mismatch. Here's Long trying to get uh -huh. it. It's intercepted. And Bozeman, did he travel? No call. Front court central. With the basketball, down by two, 2.18 to play. Pass comes to Troy, to Gibby. Gibby and Troy, the uh, dual guards out high. Gibby tossing to Troy. Stolen by Campbell County. It's Gavin Owens with the basketball. The foul is called on Central. What about Gavin Owens? He had such a game last yes, night defending Mason. Mason Keaton here tonight. He's been working on Bozeman some. He just comes away with the basketball. That is a fifth foul on Troy. Gavin Owens is not afraid to get his nose wet. Just put it that way. He'll, he'll get right in there with it. <laughs> Here comes Efren Rodriguez, who was mistakenly called Rodriguez when D.J. Smith was in the game. At the collectibles more free throw line, Gavin Owens, his team ahead by two. Make that two. You missed the first one. Thought that one was going to go in. It just kind of rimmed out on him. 2.02 to play. Second overtime, 78-76 Campbell on two David Atkins free throws. Here's Gavin Owens, toss, uh, back iron miss. Who gets the rebound? Gavin Owens. Campbell <laughs> has the ball up by two. We have, and a, we have another Destiny Rutherford. <laughs> no doubt about that. Wearing number 24. Here in front court, Jones for Campbell, picked up by the youngster, Rodriguez. Jones for Campbell, count is on, will drive through the lane, puts up a shot, it's gonna spin in! What a play! Ice water in the veins of Devin Jones, 80 to 76, 90 seconds to play in the second. Overtime, Campbell with his largest lead of four, 80 to 76. The loudest I've heard a Cougar crowd in a long time. Bowles been driving through, a rare miss, rebound by Cox for Campbell, but stolen by Rodriguez for Central. 80 seconds to Bozeman. Bozeman, skip pass. Rodriguez, left side of the key, throws it to Bozeman between the circles. Did he travel? No foul on Owens. Gavin Owens for Campbell commits unofficially his first foul. This will send Bozeman to the line and stop the clock for Central with 72 seconds to go. Campbell ahead by 80 to 76. We need to concentrate on boxing out right here. Bozeman toss, short armed it. Central's largest lead, 10, came at 27 to 17. Campbell led early one to nothing, and then by one in the first overtime with the first lead since the early 1-0 lead. Here's Bozeman, second toss, it's good. It's a three-point game, 80 to 77. Bozeman with 38. Jones for Campbell. The charge is called on John Long, player control foul. That's five on Long, that's huge. Harris draws the that foul. That is huge, yes. Say again. That was a huge, that was real huge, like you said, <laughs> Jim. <clears throat> I thought uh, John just lowered his shoulder a little bit. That's all, all it took, right? Yep. Atkins comes out. Here's the Cougar 5. The Central calls timeout. We'll regroup here in a moment. 80 to 77. Campbell leads with 65 seconds left. Central's lost mighty Troy. Campbell now has lost John Long. Long finishes with 22 points of the Cougars' 80. Long, what a night last night. 19 points, 15 rebounds. Such a warrior effort. And here tonight, which is much the same, 22 points. And now a central cheerleader. Uh, something going on down to our right. Principal Ben Faust is there along with Central Athletics Director J.D. Lambert. Not sure what took place that uh, outside the, the stripes. 65 seconds to play. I think they were asking one of the uh, <coughs> people 
one, one person in the crowd to, to leave. That's uh, what uh, Principal Ben Faust, Deputy Mike Miller. Someone may leave in handcuffs if I don't think they abide here. And here come the officers. Again, we've been focusing on the game, not uh, what's been going on outside the stripes. But the principal, Ben Faust, did a heated exchange with a central fan. And who's going to be escorted from the game. As he continues to plead his case. This is not going to end well if he doesn't comply, I think. He keeps pointing the finger at someone else. Well, so uh, one you, simple you, fan exits. Go ahead. When you're escorted out of a game, you're going to point your finger at somebody else. Somebody, <laughs> not at yourself, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah really. You know, oh. he, he paid his $6, I guess. You know, he wants to get his $6 worth. Oh. Sonogo Cox, Lester Jones, Owens, the five for Campbell. Central has Gibby and Bozeman, of course. Harris, the inbounder, far side, front court, basket to our right. Rodriguez and Brown in the game for Central. Now as things uh, begin to settle down here, outside the lines, we're ready to see what happens inside the lines. 65 seconds to play. Each team with a timeout, double bonus. Possession error favors Central, 80-77 Campbell. 60 seconds. Pass comes near side, Gibby. Gibby flicks it across the defense to Rodriguez. Driving, stopping, jumping, shooting, missing. Rebound tipped out, saved. It's uh, Brown. Now Jones for Campbell. Nearly drug the pivot, but it gets knocked down. Finally the whistle. This on Harris, 80 to 77 Campbell, 45.6 seconds to play. Jones will walk the full 94 feet. Well, not quite the full 94 feet. He'll go to the 15 foot free stripe for two tosses. Devin Jones with 24 points. Looking to give his team a five point advantage. How big would that be? That would be almost as big as John Long fouling out a moment ago. Yes. Devin gets his legs into it. Concentrate right here. Devin Jones, the crowd just uh, goes to a hush. Jones catches the ball from official J.B. Brown. Steps to the stripe with the left hand. Three dribbles. Flexes the knees. Lost to the shot. It is missing. 80 to 77 Campbell. Jones tonight with 24 points. 17 in the second half. Jones back in the strike for Campbell. Nope. Back iron miss, gets his own rebound. Next best thing to Sonogo, to Cox, 41 seconds. Campbell with Cox, a change that, that's Owens. Cox is also in the game. Owens with a basketball. Owens triple team, and now a foul on Owens. 32 seconds to play. Not quite sure no one came over to help as the triple yeah. team collapsed around Owens. He goes to the four, loses the ball. Now Central has J.D. Harris at the strike to shoot two free tosses. Let's see if this number two does better than Campbell's number two did at the free strike a moment ago. 80 to 77, 32 seconds to play. I think Gavin Owens was just dribbling too much right there. He should have got rid of the ball quicker. <coughs> he allowed two, three people to get on him. But it, that was a good foul because it would have been a layup for them. Harris toss, short arm. Need the box out. Campbell County has Lester and Cox, the men low on the post on the free throw lanes. Owens checks out, Atkins checks in, joining Lester, Cox, Jones, and Sonogo. Harris back in the strike. Tossed by Harris, short arm. Rebound by Jones to Atkins. Double team to back court to Jones. Back to Atkins at the far sideline. Those in front court to Sonogo down the far side. 23 seconds. Sonogo is fouled by Brown, perhaps. Now Sonogo for Campbell. That's a chance to give Campbell a five-point lead. This foul is on Joshua Brown. Joshua Brown, that's his third, uh, fourth unofficially. As Cox changed that Owens, readies to re-enter. Sonogo for Campbell at the stripe, two for three. The collective was a more free throw line. 22 seconds to play. Both teams with the timeout. Both teams double bonus. Sonogo free throw, back iron miss. Possession error favors Central. 
So Campbell has missed his last three free throws, two by Jones, uncharacteristically, and now another here by Sonogo. He has 14 points. His team ahead by three. Adama, Sonogo, flexes the knees, launches the shot. Good! He rips the ropes for 15. A collect was more free throw and timeouts requested 81-77. Campbell getting a little more cushion. Yes. 22 seconds, still a long way to go. A full timeout requested by the Campbell Cougars, so that leaves Central with the team with only a timeout remaining. Well, you know, we put them in so they have to have a two-possession game right here, you know, unless somebody blows me hits the three and we foul him. But, uh, you know, there's a, a few different ideas with this, uh, a, a foul on somebody quick, but it's still, still too much time left on the clock to do that. But, uh, you know, I, I think that right right now with, with – I'd, I'd put a little pressure up front right here and, and so they can uh, just not walk the ball up. Campbell County missing John Long, but managing, leading here 81-77. Long left a moment ago in the second overtime with his fifth foul. So Campbell without the services of its senior, 6'3", 190. John Long, 22 points for his efforts tonight. We're in the second overtime, much like last night. Yes, yes, it is. So Campbell brings out Owens along with Sonogo. Whoop, nope, Owens along with Jones, Atkins, Cox, and Lester. Owens will apply some pressure in backcourt, as will David Atkins. Harris to toss it and play. It comes to Bozeman. Who else? Bozeman races to front court. Needs some help. Throws it in the lane to Harris. Quickly to Gibby. Left wing three. Sure. Partially blocked by Atkins. Picked up by Rodriguez. He's fouled. 12 seconds. Again, that's another second shot. Ten precious seconds tick away for Central. Rodriguez couldn't get that one to go. Gibby with a partial block of a three by David Atkins. That was big. Cougars could not get it, though. And now... Efren Rodriguez yet to score tonight at the free throw line. Two big free throws for the junior. Cross. Good. Hit the back of the iron. Fell on through. So it's a three-point game. 81-78. 12 seconds left. Campbell ahead. Second overtime. Possession in our favor here. central. Need to box out. Lester and Cox down low. Second toss. No good. Rebound. Harris. This ain't good. In the lane. Ball lost. Now it's a tough basketball, Central's possession, but about five more seconds go away here. So Campbell ahead by three, seven and a half seconds left. Jones on his back on the floor, cradling the basketball, helped up by Gavin Cox. And Central has one timeout left. Both teams in the double bonus, 81-78 Campbell. Possession error favors Central, but that goes away. It goes back to Campbell once Harris inbounds to face the basket on the right side. He's on the near right side of the glass to toss it at the end line. And it comes to Bozeman, lets it go immediately. Foul. He's fouled. By Owens, shots no good. He was inside the three arc. Now hang on a minute. Now I think one official saying a three. Okay, it's got, well, I thought it was inside the three point line. There's three shots. He gets three shots. I thought he was inside the three point line. Apparently not. Foul on Gavin Owens for Campbell County, his second. Bozeman has missed some free throws. Yeah, he has. He is human after all, 38. For Chris Bozeman, toss is good, 81-79. Bozeman with 39. Bozeman for Central, steps back to the stripe. Campbell ahead by two, 5.4 seconds to go. Bozeman flexes the knees, launches the shot, got it. He's one free throw conversion away from tying up the basketball game. Owens comes out, Sonogo comes on, so 40 for Bozeman, 81-80. He didn't start tonight. Bozeman, second toss is good. We're tied at 81. 41 for Bozeman. Campbell County has had its opportunities. And there may still be another life left in this cat, the Cougar, <laughs> as well, Central uses its last time out. There's a good chance we might go to three, three overtimes here. Hey, I, as long as I can get to work by a little after 2 o'clock tomorrow, I'm in good shape, so I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Well, <laughs> I got to get up early tomorrow, so I got to go to UT. Oh, I wish you the best tomorrow, buddy. It is me okay. 81-81. <laughs> You're not going to a ball game, unfortunately, when you say UT. <laughs> no. As Campbell County and Central huddling with their respective teams across the way. Chris Bozeman, what a player. 41 points 
Uh, Coach Joe Ward said he wasn't uh, wasn't too happy with Bozeman. That's why he didn't start tonight. Something happened uh, prior to the game tonight. And they said, I'm not going to start him, but he'll get to play. Bozeman averaging right at 20 points per game. He's, he's doubled that tonight at least, 41. Cox will toss it and play down on the right end of the floor. He's in the far side of the glass. Brown is there with him. Those two match up pretty well, about 6 for each. He'll throw it into Jones, five seconds. Jones for Campbell down the near sideline. Jones for Campbell, driving, shooting, missing. Sonola puts it up, no good. We'll go to a third overtime. 81-81, how about that? Something else. The last three overtime game, I've only done one, was Miami at home with Ball State and Oxford. That's been a few games. It was the night that ESPN said it was the game that was not going to end. <laughs> How many overtimes did they go, four or five? Uh, we went three overtimes that three. night. So almost played almost a whole second, another half of basketball with so, 15 so minutes. So Ch Charlie Coles was it? Charlie Coles, yes. Charlie Coles, okay. Oh, my All buddy. Right. All right. Charlie we, Coles, what a guy. Uh, Ball, Ball State is, uh, was always, you know, they, I, I think he put the, uh, they, that, that league was, uh, at one time with Taylor University. I'm not, I'm not sure, Ball State, maybe Indiana State, was that it? Uh, Indiana State was in the, uh, or is in the, uh, the, uh, Oh, yeah. Wow. You've ever seen the uh, It's in the uh, Missouri Valley Conference. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, okay. Ball State and Miami in the back. But so. I, IUPU, I mean, any, it, it, was it Indiana, Indiana University at Purdue? Is that it? Or? Uh, IUPUI in Indianapolis. Okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. IUPUI. <coughs> I, I know my alphabet, but it's not. <laughs> Well, some call it ooey pooey, but they don't like that. <laughs> yeah, that's Jones right. and Sonogo, Cox, Adkins, and Owens for Campbell. John Long reminds you fouled out in that second overtime. Harris to leap with Cox. Here's William Noda step in to toss it up for the fourth time tonight. Tap controlled by Central. Bozeman throws it inside. Harris left hand layup good. Central grabs the early lead in overtime as Campbell did in the last extra session. Jones in front court. Jones with the basketball, needs help. It's going to be Cox near the center court line, 83-81 Central. Inside pass, Sonogo on the block near side, lays it up, no good, gets his own miss, back up, count it. Sonogo with 17, 83-83. What else but a tie, right? Front court, here's Bozeman driving, shooting, scoring. Bozeman, 43, have gone to a third column for his points. 85-83 Central. Campbell at the basket to our left. Jones with 24 points. Then he gets to Adamo. Inside pass to Adamo Sonogo. Right side puts up a shot. No good. Rebound by Rodriguez. He'll spring free on a pass to front court to Harris. Harris stops and he's fouled by Cox. He got Cox up in the air. They wipe off the bucket. Gets Cox up in the air. Cox had nowhere to go. Cox is up and okay. For Gavin Cox, unofficially his second foul. Oh, wait, they're calling that five. I'm, I thought I, I had him with two fouls tonight. And they're calling Cox with five. And that is uh, bad news for Campbell, if that is five. He, no, no, it isn't. It's just. Okay, they're still, still holding up the five fingers. Now, Gavin Cox, you got to stand your ground if you. Sometimes they, they make a mistake. You don't want to go to the bench too prematurely when you think you've committed your fifth foul. So the Cougars have lost two post players, Gavin Cox with 11 points, John Long with 22 via the foul. It's Lester and Sonogo, Jones, Atkins, and Owens, the five for Campbell. Harris with first of two free throws. It's good. His team ahead 86 to 83. Campbell led by four in the second overtime, 81-77. And now... Central is ahead by three, trying to make it a four-point game. 2.55 to play. This shot is good. 86. Change that 87. 83. 2.55 to play. Front court, Jones for Campbell. Jones driving through, lays it up. Short-armed it. He's fouled. He'll get a couple of shots as a result. At the collectibles, a more free throw strike. This foul is called on J.D. Harris. I have Harris with four. We need to have Bozeman with five. <laughs> yes. Two quarters ago. 
Jones, yes, at the collective for free throw stripe. 25 for Jones. Devin Jones with 29 last night. Back to the line with the left hand shot. This one by Jones. Count it. Jones with 26. 87, 85, Central with the ball and the lead. Campbell County making hay while the clock is stopped. Here's Rodriguez, trapped near side to Bozeman. Throws it across the lane to Ant, to Harris, lays it up and in. Harris has turned into the other poison tonight for Central. Here's Jones with a shot that won't go. 89-85 Central. Harris has really come through big with some putbacks for Central. And uh, he's become a lesser version of Bozeman here tonight. He's, he's really created some problems for Campbell. Now in this third overtime, he has nine points all in the second half or all after halftime because we are in the third overtime. Jones toss good to collect with more free throw strike. Jones with 27. Well, defensively, Jim, we are not coming across. We're not, the guard's not dropping down to cover him when Bozeman, for example, when Bozeman's taking it to the basket. Second free throw missed. Rebound central. Almost a travel by Harris in backcourt. Here is Gibby. Blocked by Atkins. What a play. A foul is called. Atkins pinned the ball against the glass. What a play by David Atkins. This may be his fifth. Change that. This is fourth. Fourth on David Atkins. Cougars sure could not afford to lose number five here at this stage. 2.20 left, third overtime, 89-86. Gibby at the line. Two for two at the stripe. Make that three for three. Gibby has three. Neither team wants to go away with a third loss in the district, but one is. 90-86. to 86. Gibby, back of the stripe. Tosses it up, rattles it in. Gibby with four. Central with its largest lead in the overtime. They're saying that Atkins last touched the ball as Gibby was there. Coach Ernie Clawson pleading his case. So Campbell County down 91-86. These unforced turnovers is coming back to haunt us. Front court, Bozeman throws it to Rodriguez, lays it in good. Rodriguez with three. Campbell down by seven, 2.07 to play. Still plenty of time. The Cougars need to make some buckets, in particular threes. Here's Jones with a three. It's missing. Rebound by Owens. Back to Jones. Jones sets for another three. It is good! Devin Jones taking that one to the bank. A Campbell County Hartside Bank big play. Jones with 30 tonight, topping his 29-point effort last night. It's a four-point game, 93-89. to Campbell County has it back in a manageable fashion here with 153 to play in the third. That's right, third overtime on Brown Court. You're going to see uh, Central take some take air, some uh, air out of the ball. Air out of the ball here, you know. So it's a uh, you know, they, they can they can be able to get control right here. Campbell County huddling with her coach Ernie Clawson across the way. The Cougars use their only timeout here in overtime. Central still has one timeout. Both teams have been in the long, double bonus for a long time. 153 to go in the game. Possession arrow favors Campbell. <clears throat> Both teams taking their full allotted timeout here. And now Campbell sends back to the four. Lester, Sonogo, Jones, Owens, and Atkins. Atkins nursing four fouls. Cox and Long have fouled out here in the overtimes. Long in the second overtime. Cox here in the third overtime. Campbell full court pressure against Central. Front court Central with the basketball to Gibby. Driving, shooting, scoring. Gibby for Central makes it a six-point game again. 143 to play. Gibby has six. Ball is knocked out of play by Gibby. Gibby didn't start tonight, but he has played a key role for the Bobcats down the stretch. David needs to take better care of the ball right here. You know, they're, they're, they're coming up on him, and he's, he's just getting rid of it. Owens throws it in to Adama, to Lester. Lester hands it off to Jones. Jones for Campbell. Left wing three, partially blocked. Saved by Sonogo. He falls down. It's Lester to pull it away. Now here is Atkins for a left corner three. No good. That was missed by Jones. Saved by Atkins. Now Lester for a three. It's short. Rebound central. Ahead by six, eight, 118 to play, and a foul on Campbell. 
This will send Central back to the line. That may be on David Atkins, and it is. That's his fifth. So three Cougars. Well, when you play this much basketball, you're bound to lose someone to fouls. The Cougars have lost three players to fouls. Central has lost Robinson. That was a long time ago. 3.35 to go in the fourth quarter is when he left the game. Bozeman for two tosses, his team ahead by six. They're trying to make it seven, can't do it. A rare miss by Chris Bozeman, who has 43 points tonight. 19 first half points, 24 in the second half. And he had a dry spell in the second half even. Didn't last very long. No, it didn't. <laughs> oh boy, this may be a career game for Bozeman. Yeah. Second toss, good. So Bozeman has 44, Central has a seven point advantage. 96-89, Jones for Campbell. He needs to spring free for a three try. Lester's gonna try to help out. Shots blocked out of play by Harris on the far side. And the ball stays with Campbell. 65 seconds to play. Seven point deficit. Still time for the Cougars. Owens to toss it to play. Far side front court in front of the Cougar bench. And it comes to Luke Browning. Lost control. Save by Central. Central. Rodriguez trapped on the far side. Throws it to Brown between the circles. Hands it off to Harris. Now to Bozeman. 53 seconds. Bozeman will spring free. Drive, shoots, scores. He's fouled. Bozeman, 46 points on the night tonight. And I'm not sure if he has any idea how many points he scored. I don't think so. <coughs> it would be hard to keep up with that many points in your in your head as you play, I would think. 46. Well, his, his mother could be in the stands. She could be. And, you know, because, <laughs> you know, Devin's mother keeps track of her, his stats. Oh, okay. 98-89. Free throw missed by Bozeman. Ball is loose. Central calls timeout. That's Harris. Central uses its last timeout ahead by 9, 98-89. Bobcats sensing victory here. Still 45.6 seconds to play. Three overtimes. 67-67, then 81-81. And here, Central did not play last night. Last time it played was on Tuesday last week. Lost at home to Jefferson County 50-40. to I think we can go back, Jim, is, is with our free throw shooting period. That's what it comes down to. I, I don't know if we're even shooting 60%, maybe 50%. Pro, pro, probably not, but, you know, when you when you go to overtime, you got to say one or two would have done it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> 98-89, Central ahead. Campbell breaks from his huddle with Browning, McKinney, Jones, Adama, Sonogo, and Owens. You, you know, last night they played 40 minutes, right? The two overtimes, right. the 40, you know, so – you know, so far tonight they're playing. So that's 84 minutes of basketball in the last two nights. It's a lot of ball. Yes, a, lot, a lot of fun if you're a ball player, that's for sure. Central inbounds, far side, front court, front of the central bench. And now Browning will foul Gibby. 41 seconds to play. Long, Atkins, and Cox have left the fouls tonight. So has Robinson for Central. Campbell County's. Up front game is basically down to Adama Sonogo now with the absence of Long and Cox. Gibby at the line. He's been money tonight for Central. Seven points. He's made all five of his free throws. Gibby off the bench, only a sophomore. Back of the stripe. Gibby, second throw, no good. Rebound bobbled around, say by Brown. He juggled it for a while and hung on. Foul on McKinney on Bozeman. This will send Bozeman to the stripe to shoot two. Bozeman with 46 points. 99-89 is the score. In the third overtime, Central ahead of Campbell. And there's another second shot off, off a free throw. Brown there with it. So Bozeman with two tries. 46 points for the junior. Toss, Bozeman rattles around, falls in. Bozeman with 47. Back to the stripe for number 11. He's listed as a point guard. He can play at about any position. Second free throw is missing. Rebound by Sonogo for Campbell County. 100 to 89 Central. Front court. 
Jones tries a tray. It is off the back of the iron. Central, no, it's Sonogo. Now to Jones for another tray. Jones for Campbell, short. Central with the rebound, 20 seconds to play. Now Bozeman, front court will drive. He'll dunk it again. Bozeman with 49 points, 102 to 89, 10 seconds. Here's Jones, lays it up the other end. As the clock winds down, Central will take home a 102 to 91 win over the Campbell Cougars. Final score, John Brown, Jim. Central 102, Campbell 91. You're following Campbell basketball on the WLAF Phillips Tire Shop Sports Network. T-Cat is a cat fan. T-Cat, a Jacks bro, loves the Cougars. Your Tennessee College of Applied Technology is the leader in technical education and industry training. T-Cat makes higher education accessible to more Tennesseans. Select from a career in administrative office technology, computer information technology, cosmetology, residential, commercial, industrial electricity, machine tool technology, pharmacy technician, power sports technology, practical nursing, computer information technology, welding technology, Start on your road to success now. Connect to tcatjacksbro.edu. BP is back. Rice Oil has brought back BP to Big O's Get and Go and Cumberland Crossing BP. BP provides the energy that keeps Campbell County and America moving and helps drive the U.S. economy. Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco from Rice Oil, La Follette. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in the surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing. 423-566-6561. Citizens Bank is a locally owned and operated bank serving communities in East Tennessee. The bank was established in 1934 with three guiding principles at its foundation. Assurance of safety to depositors, a high standard of service to customers, and a genuine desire to serve the community. These principles are the core factor in the success that has lasted over 85 years and grown Citizens Bank to the renowned financial institution it is today. To learn more about Citizens Bank, visit CitizensBank24.com. I'm Tracy Lobertini with Alco Builders and Realty. Take a look at what we have for you today. Thanks, Tracy. Now here's a beautiful three-bed, two-bath home located at 259 Clover Circle in Jacksboro in the desirable Wheeler Landing subdivision. Recent upgrades on the home include beautiful hardwood floors throughout, neutral paint, updated light fixtures, butcher block countertops, stainless steel appliances, a new roof, and more. The primary bedroom has an in-suite bath with a new walk-in shower. The exterior offers a two-car garage with concrete drive, a covered front porch, and a level lot. This home has all the amenities you can want and more, currently priced at $275,000. If you're looking to buy or to sell, my name's Tracy Lobertini, 423-562-0638. Just give me a call. Campbell has played five overtime sessions in the last 24 hours. If the night doesn't go so well, three overtimes tonight in Central wins 102 to 91 over the Campbell County Cougars. With us is associate head coach Brandon Clausen. Coach, I guess you could go back to maybe something as simple as free throws tonight to be the difference for your team as you had a four-point lead there and the second overtime just couldn't hang on. Yeah, um, you know, we, we keep digging ourselves a hole early though, Jim. And, and, you know, if you remember way back when, three hours ago when this game started, we keep we keep digging ourselves a hole, and I just don't understand it. On our home floor, it just seems like we don't come out ready to play. We get punched in the mouth, and then we have to come back in the second half every single night. To our kids' credit, we came back again, but you got to make free throws down the stretch. You had, we had a four-point lead and a double overtime right there, and we just missed free throw after free throw, turned the ball over, fouled a three-point shooter. Uh, we didn't deserve to win the game right there the way we handled double OT. You lose, uh, lose three players to fouls. That didn't help. You lost uh, in regulation John Long. 
Yes. And then, of course, well, but that may have been, I think that was the first, first overtime. First overtime. And then, of course, here comes Gavin Cox and David Atkins leaving the game. Still had a chance late in that third overtime. We did. Um, we couldn't guard the Bozeman kid. He absolutely killed us. We went to a box and one on him, and he still probably had 20 while we were in a box and one. I mean, we just, we had nobody that can guard him. Uh, we started out in the zone. We didn't like the way it was going early, so we tried to go man. Nobody could keep him in front of him. Nobody. We tried John. We tried Devin. We tried David. We tried Gavin Owens. Uh, nobody could keep him in front of him. He scored 30 points after intermission. It didn't. It, we we, we kind of laughed that he had a, a little bit of a dry spell, but Coach Atherton said it wasn't for very long. No. But the one impressive player who didn't even start tonight, he is a regular starter. But uh, for your team tonight, Coming off last night's double overtime win, I thought uh, your team certainly did not give up those who were still in the game that didn't foul out. No. But uh, quite an effort there, especially in the, the fourth quarter. No, we had some kids who were dragging right there, but you know what? They sucked it up and they kept playing hard. I don't think quit was anything in it. Just some mental mistakes right there mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we, we've got to be better. You've got to, you've got to be able to go to the line and knock down your free throws. We've got to have somebody besides Devin that says, hey, I want the ball at the end of the game because people are going to start double-teaming Devin. They're going to start getting the basketball out of his hands. And right now, when we pass the ball away late in games, we don't have that guy that's ready to step up yet. And well, hopefully we can find it, and hopefully we got a guy that will step to the line and make two free throws. Well, I think that uh, what we missed tonight, the Cougars missed tonight, was John Long because last night you had the, the, mm. the kind of give-and-go two-man game, John Absolutely. Long, Devin Jones. Uh, that luxury was not there tonight, in particular for the last two overtimes. Well, there's a reason why those two have started since their sophomore year. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, th they've been in these situations because our first two years there we played close games night in, night out. They know how to handle it. These other kids have never been here before. I mean, mm -hmm. they this is their first go-around. We're playing these tight-knit basketball games. You know, but still no excuse for missing free throws. I mean, you just that, – that's going to leave a bad taste in my mouth tonight because I felt like I told – last night I was up here and I said I didn't feel good about it. Tonight I felt good right there. When we're up 81-77, double overtime, I'm like, okay, we just got to make free throws, ball game over. And then before you know it's 81-81, we're going into another overtime. Central wins it 102-91. to Certainly a key district game here tonight. Central wins its first game in district competition. Cougars still searching for that first one. We'll be uh, having a chance for that on Friday. What kind of routine will you have after having five overtimes in two days heading into the preparation for the Powell game? Uh, they're off tomorrow, and then we'll probably come in and shoot free throws till they're sick of them on Thursday. Okay. Uh, no, we'll come in Thursday, go over the scout for Powell, and, you know, we, we really need this one Friday night. We cannot go to 0-4. I know I sat up here last night and said we can't go to 0-3. Well, we're 0-3, you know. Mm -hmm. But we dug ourselves a hole last year, and, you know, crazy things happen in this district. So many teams are good in this district. You can be beat any given night. So, you know, if we could rattle off three, four, five in a row, who knows? We may can still jump up and get that two, three seed we talked about last night. But our kids are not going to quit. Mm -hmm. We're not going to quit. I, I feel like this squad, and it, you know, I know we're 0-3, but I do feel like our squad is getting better. I, you know, since the Hardin Valley game, I feel like we're making strides tonight. We let one get away, which we may have got one we shouldn't have last night. So Okay. It, it evens out. That's what John Brown used to say. <laughs> it evens out and in. Coach, Coach Brandon Clawson, thanks for taking time for us. We'll All look right. forward to seeing you on Friday over to Powell. All right, thank you, Jim. All right, Coach, Appreciate thanks you. a lot. Coach Brandon Clawson and his Cougars falling in a tough one tonight, 102-91 to in triple overtime to the Central Bobcats. We'll talk individual scoring. Well, let's do that right now. It's the TCAT Cougar wrap-up show. We'll also name our collectibles a more player of the game coming up here in just a moment. First for the Central Bobcats. Everybody in the house knows that Chris Bozeman had a game tonight, 49 points. 30 of those came after halftime. He didn't start the game, but what an impressive performance by the junior for the Central Bobcats as he leads his team to the victory, 49 points. 14 points from Trey Robinson, who fouled out in the fourth quarter. Robinson was not available for the three overtimes for Central. Efren Rodriguez comes in with three points. Those were big late in the game. Four from Joshua Brown, Joshua Brown, plus lots of putback points, and lots of putback efforts. Second shot chances by Joshua Brown. Dante Strickland played uh, early. Four points he scored all in the first half, did not play in the second half. Uh, it was uh, Keith Perez 
playing sparingly. He scored two points in this game, those in the first half. Also for Central, as we mentioned, Trey Robinson. Uh, it is uh, Zavion Gibby, the sophomore, finishing with seven points. He made all five of his free throws. He was key down the stretch for Central. J.D. Harris with nine. Harris also had some putback points that were big in the second half for Central. And Mighty Troy finishing with three before fouling out in this game with the Campbell County Cougars. Now for the Cougars, Campbell County led in scoring tonight by Devin Jones, 32 points. For Jones, 25 of those came in the second half. John Long fouled out in the second overtime as he finishes with 22 points tonight. Also for Campbell, Gavin Cox fouling out, finishing with 11. Adama Sonogo, 17 points for Campbell County, 7 in the second half. David Atkins, 8 points, many of those at the free throw line for number 5, who also fouled out of the ball game. Elijah McKinney with 2 for Campbell County. It was also uh, Gavin Owens playing, not scoring. Uh, Luke Browning played for Campbell and did not score tonight in this basketball game. 102-91, the final in triple overtime as Central wins over Campbell. Back in a moment for our final wrap-up on the TCAT Cougar Wrap-Up Show here on the WLAF Tools Tire Shop Sports Network. Hello, Cougar fans. I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. Gray Insurance is your local independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. The folks at Hensley Tire and Service welcome you by their new location at the corner of Beach and Indiana Avenue in La Follette. Hensley's Tire and Service provides road service going to customers stuck on the highway somewhere with tire or engine trouble. Servicing tractor trailer trucks is another service offered along with mechanical work, alignment, and lifts. 423-563-TIRE. That's 563-8473. Terry's Pharmacy delivers. Whether it's at their drive throughs at the curbside, or at your doorstep, Terry's is delivering countywide. Don't want to get out of the house? Terry's will safely deliver to your door. Anxious about your pharmacy not having a drive through Terry's will seamlessly help you transfer your prescriptions so you can drive through at one of Terry's convenient locations, La Follette and Jacksboro. At the drive throughs drop off your prescription and wait in the parking lot for your phone call when it's ready. Have a question? Want to transfer your prescription? Just call Terry's, 423-5. 562-4928. 562-4928. No matter where you are in Campbell County, you're liable to see us on deliveries. Just honk and wave. At United Cumberland Bank, our number one focus is people. You see, our employees are our largest shareholders, and they are dedicated to ensure your financial success. And one of the biggest financial decisions you can make is a home loan, and we will help every step of the way. Buying a home is a huge decision. So is choosing the right lender. Find out more at unitedcumberland.com. United Cumberland Bank. Generations of trust. Neighbors you know. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. All loans subject to credit approval. It's Campbell falling in triple. Yes, that's right. Triple overtime to Central 102 to 91. Jim Freeman, Don Atherton. Coach, how about it? Who's the collectibles more player of the game tonight? I think we should go with Devin. Devin Jones, he, okay. he's, he, <coughs> he kept us in the game. He, you know, he tied it up. Uh, you know, and even when he shot free throws, when we needed him to tie it, he made them. But th that's something we need to work on. Devin Jones, 32 points for his effort tonight. What a game by Devin Jones for the Campbell Cougars. The Lady Cougars win tonight by a final score of 68-40 to 40 over the Central Lady Bobcats. The largest lead, 30 in that game. And then it is the Central Bobcats winning 102 to 91 over the Cougars in the varsity game. It was Central winning the JV Cougars game earlier. Our next broadcast on Friday from Powell, beginning just before six o'clock here on the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network. Uh, Jim Freeman here saying so long tonight for uh, Clayton Carroll, uh, along with Derek Lee Anderson back in network control. Aaron Hopkins, Matthew Moore, Coach Don Atherton, Jim Freeman here saying so long from Campbell County High School where it's Central winning over Campbell 102-91 in triple overtime on the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network.
The Cougars are on the air, and this is your front row seat to all the action. This is Jason Kidd, head basketball coach of the Lady Cougars. Campbell High Sports is a presentation of these outstanding WLAF corporate partners. Hi, this is Rissa at Terry's Pharmacy. We'll follow utilities, LUB. Hi, this is Rhonda Longmire with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Hi, this is Tabitha Burris. This is Lori Johnson. This is Paige at E.E. Hill Insurance. This is Lansdon Hill with Hill Insurance. This is number 30, former lady in the scoreboard, then it's time to see me, Dr. Jill Browning. Valley Roofing, East Tennessee's leader in roofing and seamless guttering. Hi, this is President Debbie Petrie at TCAT Jacksboro. Tim Smith at TCAT Jacksboro. Go, Go Cougars. Cougars. Citizens Bank, bank your own way. This is Matt Klein with CNL Metal, former Cougar number 42. Hey, this is Brenda Russell with Clayton Holmes Jacksboro. Hey, Camel County Cougar sports fans, this is former Cougar number 32, Randy Heatherly. Rice Oil, your home for BP. Clarinet, flag corps of the Campbell County. Marching Band. Hi, this is Amanda Brown with Cumberland Gap Medical. This is Bailey Ball. I'm back for fall at my supply. Hi, this is Rayma Darty at United Cumberland Bank, and we love the Cougars. Hi, this is Joey Porton at the world famous Charlie's Pizza. This is Tracy Lobertini at Alco Builders and Realty in La Follette. Hello, it's Larry Burge at Burge Screen Print. Go Cougars! And Lace to Pearls is just for girls, of course, Jim. This is Brian. Carrie, Beth, come see us at First National Bank. Hey, this is Melinda at Powell Clinch Utilities. Go Cougars! This is Brian Leach with Grace Rehab. Hey, this is Hunter Huckabee. Come see my dad at Dole's Tire Shop. This is Mark Kane with La Follette Medical Center. This is David Reynolds, President of People's Bank of the South. Hey, this is Cougar basketball coach Ernie McClawson. Listen to him. Watch him. Follow him. The Cougars. Your home of the Campbell Cougars. This is WLAF.